It's a picture-perfect afternoon here in South Philadelphia. The Phillies wrapping up this homestand against the Tampa Bay Rays. It's been a good one so far. Four wins, one loss. Today, it's the finale of this three-game series. The Phils and the Rays from Citizens Bank Park. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom McCarthy, joined by Matt Stairs. Last night, it was the Aaron Nola show. He was fantastic. In fact, probably better than advertised for the Phillies. Unfortunately, they didn't get a any offense for him. They wound up losing the game one to nothing. Well, today, Adam Morgan is hoping for a little more offense from the Phils as he goes after another victory. Well, he's hoping to get some more offense. It's nice to see these two young pitchers going back to back, making his first major league, or fifth major league start, excuse me. Last outing, Adam Morgan, I thought, had the best changeup he had the whole year. His command on this changeup had a lot of awkward swings, guys out in front. Command his fastball very well. Didn't throw very many curveballs. But he has a very good slider as well. Composure on the man, especially last night with Aaron Nola and tonight with Adam Morgan. Amazing. These guys, going, all they do is throw strikes. They have a great tempo. They work very quick, and they make the defense play behind them. Well, you look at the numbers so far for Adam Morgan. The only blip on the radar screen is that game against the Los Angeles Dodgers, but it was nice to see. We just saw the highlights. Him come back against the Miami Marlins, 6 and a third. He left with the game tied at 2. The Phillies eventually won the game in extra innings and part of the reason why they won that game in extra innings and part of the reason why they've been able to stay in all these ball games is because the bullpen has been so good since the all-star break they're being used a little differently matt but they've been really good well they are and i think pete's doing a very good job of bringing guys in garcia very good slider you know he's been using his fastball which makes that slider even better gomez has been pitching unbelievable he's been going in his tempo's been a lot better Really, he could get away with two pitches, a fastball and a sinker, and Diekman changing his delivery, going with the slide step, throwing strikes. These two guys are going up, pounding the strikes on. This is the bullpen we expect to see when we went into spring training. Look at the numbers. Two walks and 21 in the third inning. You see 25 strikeouts. So we didn't even talk about Giles. We didn't even talk about Papelbon. These guys in the middle of the order of the bullpen have to go out, throw strikes, and get it to the back end of the bullpen to get the saves and, and uh you know, continue to do being aggressive. That's what they're doing. They're being aggressive, throwing strikes. So good job so far. Well, and you talked about the walks. The walks yeah. seem to be the key because that was a big topic of conversation during the first half when the bullpen struggled. It'll be Morgan making his fifth start in the big leagues. Jake Odorizzi will make his 15th start for the Tampa Bay Rays, and he's looking to get back to the 500 mark. Last night, a lot of emotion, not only for the fans, but how about the Nola family? They were involved in every pitch and every at-bat. That's his base hit. Lineups and first pitch when we return. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Citizens Bank. One deposit checking. Keeping things simple is helping you bank better. Buy Toyota. Where will Toyota take you? Visit buyatoyota.com to find out. Toyota, let's go places. Buy Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. And buy Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Learn more at ibx.com.
Bills and the Tampa Bay Rays wind down this three game series on a gorgeous day. It's comfortable to pitch. It's comfortable to hit. It's comfortable to do just about anything. And the Phils will try to end this homestand on a real positive note after sweeping the Marlins and splitting the first two against the Rays. The lineup for the Rays brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Phillies. Geyer, Souza, and Longoria are the top three. The next three, Logan Forsythe, that's an odd cleanup hitter, playing second base. Joey Butler bats fifth. Tim Beckham sixth. At the bottom third of Jake Elmore at first base, Rene Rivera catching for a second straight day, and Jake Odorizzi. On the mound, they'll face left-hander Adam Morgan, the 25-year-old from Marietta, Georgia. One and two with an ERA of just under four. Uh, he's been a breath of fresh air from the left side for the Phillies since his call-up. And I think he's looking to duplicate, Matt, what he did in his last outing against the Marlins. Well, the last outing against the Marlins, what he did is he used his fastball and he spotted it. And then that made his change up in the slider even better. You can see the scouting report. Average velocity, 90 miles an hour. Curve change slider. He'll use the slider 42.5% of the time when he has two strikes on a hitter. So you know he has the confidence to swing and miss slider. So biggest thing for him is don't change the thing. Keep on throwing strikes. Yeah, and I think this is a good lineup for him to go after, this Tampa Bay lineup, because, you know, 237 is a team, 14th in the American League. Their on-base percentage is so-so. Well, Tom, I know you've been waiting all day. It's new to have keys to the game, and for me, the first key is Morgan. Keep the Rays off balance. American League East teams love the fastball, move the slider in, change up as well on Phillies, and a good homestand with the W. They've played very well since the second half, so finish strong and get ready to go to Chicago and God's country, Toronto. <laughs> Brandon Geyer will lead it off. Tampa in this series is hitting 197. They've scored four runs. They have 13 hits. Now the Phillies have only scored one more run. They didn't score any in last night's ball game. Geyer making his first start. 262, four homers and 20 runs batted in in the first pitch of the day. Fastball just a little high, and we're underway. We're about 12 degrees different today than we were yesterday or the day before. 83 degrees with a, a slight breeze. Now that breeze benefited the Rays last night. We'll talk about that in just a little bit. There you see the temperature and the winds. One ball, one strike to Brandon Geyer. And he pops it up. Off of the mask, Ruiz shading his eyes from the sun. Not an easy play. Makes the catch wow. as he does a split into the dugout. That's a heck of a play by Carlos. Well, battling the sun, battling the wind, battling pretty much everything. Good concentration, slips right there, but holds on and makes a very nice play. I like the fact that someone came up. Who's that came up? It right? was Frank Cor. Yeah, Frank Cor coming up to try to help him. <laughs> he looked like he needed help. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody needed to brace Jeff. <laughs> Steven Souza Jr. is the batter, and he hits the first pitch that he sees into the air to left. It's going to stay in the ballpark. He's thinking, I'm not going to get to two strikes today. He struck out four <laughs> times last I night. I put the ball in play. It's a good day already. So two away on four pitches, and here's Evan Longoria, who's played all three games now for the Rays. He doesn't sit out that often. We get these notes on who's hot and who's not around Major League Baseball. Dustin Pedroia is not hot for the Red Sox, and Evan Longoria is on that list as well. But that can change at any time. He's one for 23, or one for his last 23. And you know it's not going well when last night you hit two balls to the right side of the infield with only one guy over there and you hit it right at Ryan Howard twice. Perfect scouting report. But right out of you, right. Speaking of perfect scouting report, that was a perfect change up right there from Adam Morgan. Good location. Adam, lifetime in the minor leagues, 13 wins, 28 losses with an ERA of 3.53. Yeah. And Ruiz hangs on. They're going to say that ball hit the dirt, though. Pretty good sell by Carlos. It did sound like it, it hit the dirt before it skipped up into his glove. Let's look at it. 
Oh, yeah. Well before the glove. But he didn't even make foul tip, though, did he? Yeah, he did. He did just he? barely got a piece of it. In the air to left field. And Cody Ashy again. He jammed him nicely. Side is retired. Two flyouts to Ashy and left. The wind is an advantage today for the pitcher. And so is the defense of Carlos Ruiz. This is how he opened the game. A little split into the Phillies dugout. And we'll head to the bottom of the first. Lead things off for the Phils, get himself ready to head up to the home plate area. Let's take a look at the Phillies lineup. It's brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. After Revere, it's Galvis and then Hernandez. Ryan Howard bats cleanup. Andres Blanco hits fifth, playing third again. Dominic Brown sixth. The bottom third of Carlos Ruiz, Cody Ashey batting eighth, and Adam Morgan hitting ninth. Now they will face 25 year old right hander Jake Odorizzi. Who was five and six with a very good earned run average and a very good opponent's batting average against? He's been plagued a little bit by the theory that you go through the order twice, you're going to go to the bullpen. And he also has been plagued by run support, Matt. Well, he has. He has a good fastball, uh, four pitch pitcher, average velocity 91 miles an hour. Now, that cutter, you can say it's a, a slider, and the changeup is more of a split finger fastball. When they get sitting 203. Versus the split slash change. And Revere starts it off. He takes outside. It's 1 0. That change up or splitter that Matt's referring to, uh, he calls the thing. <laughs> now, it's not his name for it. It's actually Alex Cobb, who's on the disabled list, his name for it. Cobb taught it to him. One ball, one strike to Revere. At the knees, 1 and 2. So. Well, here comes the thing. Yeah. So one ball, two strikes. Cobbs is called thing one, and his is called thing two. You know, like Dr. Seuss. Interesting. That one is floated out towards center field. Well, the thing has been taken to center for a base hit by Ben Revere. It was now five for 16 since the All-Star break, and the numbers go back even better since the first of June. Nice job. It's fastballs. The first three at bats, and then he hits the thing. The left center. Head down, stay through the ball. Does look like it moves pretty good. Yeah, we're gonna have to look and see what kind of grip he's got. If it's a fork, if it's a fork ball, split finger, he could said, be the middle the Vulcan pitch. He said it's more like a split finger. Freddie Galvis is the hitter. Galvis hitting 271. Four homers and 25 RBIs. Good month of July. Looked like it was going to be even better last night in his first at bat and his second at bat. He had two balls to right field that the Rays thought at least the first one was going to go. They thought it was out of the yard. That one's out toward left field. Joey Butler on the run won't get it. It's a fair ball. It just bloops inside the line and it'll be a double for Freddie Galvis. Well, you mash a couple last night, you don't get anything to show for it. You bloop one here and you get your 10th double of the season. Uh, and I honestly believe that the ball that Freddie Galvis just hit, the wind helped it by knocking it down closer to the line. 
The wind's not blowing a lot, but it kind of comes to the left field tunnel. It just lands inside the line. It almost like it hit a wall and dropped straight down. And allowed you know, Rivera to get the third base and Freddie to get the second base. Well, now the Rays will play the infield back with nobody out and Cesar Hernandez up. Hernandez two for eight in the series. Both hits are extra base hits. And he starts them off with a split or a change. And it's one and oh. See Longoria is up, so is the first baseman Elmore. Don't hit it's one of those guys. Franco out of the lineup, you have to play small ball right here. Ground ball to second, get him over, get him in. Talked to Mike Kell today. He said he's feeling a lot better. He was out throwing early today, very early today. And he said he's feeling a lot better. They do think, like last night, that if they need him, he could pinch hit. Three balls, no strikes. And you said he did it on a throw. Correct. So it wasn't a hyperextended elbow on a swing. Nah, he he had said the other day that it was a throw. Okay. There he is. He's got the the sleeve on that arm. In the dirt ball for Hernandez walks that brings Ryan Howard to the plate. The lucky McDonald's Phillies home run jackpot contestant is Lisa Lebedzi. Lebedsky. Boy, we practiced that before the game from Sellersville. Phillies hit a home run in today's game, then Lisa will win $300. Well, Ryan Howard, the franchise's all time leader in grand slams, has a revere over third. Galvitz is second. And Hernandez at first. Well, there's no wiggle room. It's interesting that the alignment is still with three on the right side, but they're not as deep, so that benefits Howard as far as the shift goes. Second batter in a row, he started him off with a changeup. He's trying to get that ground ball. Howard watches that one go by for strike two. No balls, two strikes. Back to back changeups. Today's game is also available in Spanish. Just use the SAP button on your television or change the language through the menu on your cable box. Angel, Bill, and Will are over in the other booth. Nice play by Rivera. You have that kind of a changeup or split. If you're going to call it the thing, then the catcher has to be on his toes. Talked about their defensive alignment. Very interesting to see how far Tim Beckham is from second base. Yeah. It'll almost be like a football. You know, he's been standing. This is where he was standing earlier. And he'll get there eventually. It's going to be tough because if he has to cover second base, it's almost like a football player hitting a wide receiver. You got to lead him to the base. Even though Ryan doesn't run real, real, real well, they still have to lead him. You have to be confident that you can lead him to the base too. Right. Two-two pitch, and that one's hit sharply towards second. Well, we'll see. They do lead him to the bag. A run scores. It'll be a four-six-three double play. That was a little easier than what you anticipated. Yeah. Revere crosses the plate. No RBI for Howard. Over to third goes Galvis. Well, the Phillies were shut out last night for the 11th time this year. No shutout here today. The ball's hit hard. Right on point of contact. Beckham froze a little bit. You know, and of course, that does a nice job of giving them a, a strong feed. But I suppose it doesn't matter because if you have a fast runner, they're not going to have a shift on you. So Blanco takes outside. It's 1 0. The only time that'll be interesting if that ball is hit to Beckham's left. Can I get it or not? He goes for it and then he gets caught off. 
can he get back to second base? Yeah, he may have to just throw it to first. Yeah. Blanco starting at third again today, hitting 275 with two homers and nine RBIs. He's got Galvis at third. He does like that changeup to yeah, lefties. A it's a good changeup. Good location. He threw it again. I think that's four straight to Blanco, isn't it? Dominic Brown waits. Finally came back with a fastball, and now it's three and two. You think it fastball here? I'm thinking fastball, same location. Chopper back over the mounds, surrounding it is Forsythe throws to first, and it's not in time. A run scores. An infield hit. Elmore wants them to check it. Kevin Cash is up on the warning track. And right now the Phillies lead it 2 nothing. By the way, he came back with the changeup. See how close it is right here. Why did he get down the line? He beat it. Safe. Good hustle. Tenth RBI of the season for Andres Blanco. They're still waiting. They're still debating whether they want to challenge this or not. I'm sure that they have seen the replay that we just showed you, and they have. Yeah, nope. he's not going to do it. Even if he thought there was a chance, I think it's too close to do it here. The throw is lower. He's probably out. Yeah, Elmore probably could have stretched more too. Yeah. So two away, two nothing. Phillies. Dominic Brown hitting 2-12. So three straight hitters now that he started them off with a changeup. Oda Rizzi, his last start, walked five. Now he's only walked one in this inning, but his command has been part of the issue in this first. Although he's just painted with back to back fastballs to Brown. That one's lined out toward left center. It'll drop for a hit. Blanco's around second. He'll hold up there. It's not Kiermaier, but it was still right in front of him. So that's the fourth hit of the inning for the Phillies. Well, a lot of good things so far with the lefties. Ben Revere going left center with the split uh, with the split change. And Dominic Brown staying on the ball, not pulling off. Front hip stays in there. It's a little dinker up in left center. So Carlos stands in. You see, 0 for his nine over his last three games. He's officially 0 for his last 10. Trying to put another run across the plate here. Fouls it away. And it's 0 and 1. All right, so if you look at the lineup right now, you have Ben Revere and Galvis, Blanco and Brown, all hitting the thing. The thing, yeah. too. Thing, too. Either up the middle or opposite <laughs> way, which is was a nice job of staying through the ball and, and not getting out there and, and hooking at the second base. Yeah, the approach has been very good here in the first. Carlos checks. Odorizzi says that pitch, and he's a former number one pick, so there was a lot of expectations for him with two other organizations, now his third. But that pitch has really made him 
an effective major league pitcher. He throws it 32 percent of the time. So he likes it which is fine. But we've seen that he has a good fastball at 92. He can spot his fastball way versus his left handers. So why not throw your fastball until like today for instance. They've hit his thing too. Well already so why don't you throw your fastball and see if they can hit that one. Carlos hits it out toward left center field. Butler came in, now goes back. He's under it, but is helped out by Geyer. And the center fielder makes the catch. So a productive first inning for the Phillies. They score two runs on four base hits. They force Odorizzi th to throw 30 pitches. They lead it by two as we go to the second. Weekend here at Citizens Bank Park. Yes, there's a game on Thursday, the 30th, against the Braves, but then Alumni Weekend, brought to you by the good folks at Toyota, will take place. Friday, the 31st, Pat Burrow will be inducted into the Phillies Wall of Fame. A great honor that began with the Phillies and the Philadelphia A's being honored, now just the Phillies being honored. Saturday, the 1st, is Alumni Night, and then Sunday, the 2nd, the Phillies Wall of Fame Fathead, free to all fans. Tickets can be purchased for that weekend series against the Atlanta Braves. By going to Phillies.com. You want to check out all the information leading up to Alumni Weekend and the Wall of Fame induction ceremonies. Feel free to go to Phillies.com or MLB.com and click on the Phillies. And you can find all of that information, purchase your tickets, do everything else. Logan Forsythe will lead it off. Career high in games at bats, hits for Forsyth, batting cleanup today. A one pitch. Curveball that hung a high. That's one and one. Good spot. He ran it inside. It's one ball and two strikes Very to good. Logan Forsyth. Very good location. Great catch by that little guy right there. A well worn in glove always helps. Good boy. Trying to get that curveball to be part of his repertoire. So two balls, two strikes.
Forsyth so far in this series is two for six for Tampa Bay. Almost a defensive swing. Dominic Brown out in right field makes the catch. One out. Four up, four down. Murph, it's a good start for Adam Morgan. Very good start for Adam Morgan and uh, Tom and Matt. It is the moment that I know you guys have been waiting for pretty much all season long. We, we told folks last night, we teased them a little bit, but today is the first. Ask the announcers any question you want. We're doing it in conjunction with the CSN Philly Facebook page. So all you have to do is go on CSN Philly on Facebook and like the page, and then you can ask any question to the announcers today about baseball, about the team, or, or just about anything else. And guys, I know you already know, we've already gotten a couple hundred questions that yeah. have come into the Facebook page. They're scouring through them right now. We're going to answer some of them on Facebook. We're also going to answer some of them on the air. So let the questions come right now, and uh, we'll do the best we can in answering some of those questions some of those questions and and be creative folks you know, yeah and just, just ask us the same old stuff yeah right? just to answer the basic ones yes Matt and I this is our hair it's our real hair <laughs> and uh, mine's a wig it's yeah. exactly right and yes we do work out in our own way <laughs> one ball and two strikes to Joey Butler well, the luggage does get heavy it guys. does yeah. Joey Butler one for two is a pinch hitter so far in this series and he doesn't go fishing down low, two and two. I do ab work every morning. Got to get out of bed. And I roll out of bed. <laughs> Got to get out of bed. <laughs> well, Murph, you said we've been waiting all year. I've been waiting 268 games <laughs> till this day. That's right. We we uh, we didn't get to ask you any questions last year. You didn't get a chance to play. So uh, I, I'm sure a lot of folks are going to have some questions for you. Okay. So be ready. <laughs> Toward the hole. That's a base hit for Butler. So the first hit of the day comes from Joey Butler. First hit of the day for the Rays. Plus the first base hit. Adam Morgan has given up this year on a changeup. Really? So how many times has he thrown that changeup? What's the percentage? Uh, he has thrown probably like 47 or 48 changeups this year. And that's the first hit he's allowed. The first hit he's allowed. Well, that's part of the reason why he's been successful. Yep. A lot of those numbers, when you hear us say percentage or you hear us say uh, stuff like that, that comes from the folks at Bloomberg Sports. That's where we get a lot of our percentage numbers and those pie charts that we put up. It's really interesting research and the stuff that they're able to pick out. And allow us to utilize is really helpful in understanding the tendencies of a pitcher and a hitter. Beckham takes low one and oh. Beckham 216 batter with five homers and 16 runs batted in. Adam Morgan throws his changeup nearly 17% of the, the time. Fastballs his dominant pitch, and then the breaking ball. You know, it's interesting to see he was trying to throw a curveball uh, a couple of pitches ago, and he only uses it. And I know we're throwing a lot of percentages out there, 1.4% of the time. So he might mix in maybe two a game, but majority of the time, 60% fastballs, 22% sliders. But it does help when you know because teams get the same stuff we get when they see that chart and it says all right he does have a curveball right. does help him down and away two and one Phillies well, needed two nothing they scored two runs in their half of the first on four hits which was much more than Aaron Nola saw last night. Aaron was excellent in six innings yesterday for the Phillies. That one is spun to the right side. It's going to sneak into the outfield for a base hit. Butler stops at second. Well, that's a shame. Middle infielders are cheating for two, so that leaves that gap wide open on the right side. You can see where they are right here. Playing up the middle for two. This ball goes right through here. What do you call swing hard and go to right? 
And it would have been close whether Hernandez would have been able to get to it and throw Beckham out if he was in normal depth. Jake Elmore's the hitter. He's hitting 375 against left handed pitching. Which is one of the reasons why they found a spot for him here this afternoon playing first base. For the 24th time this year. And a line drive base hit into left field. Ashy will play it on a hop. They'll hold the runner at third. So bases are now loaded for the Rays. And Renee Rivera is coming up. You know, we showed out Aaron Nola a moment ago. Uh, as far as the Rays are concerned, they were. Overwhelmingly impressed with Aaron Nola last night. Kevin Cash was saying after the game that they had the scouting reports on him, but that his fastball and the life on his fastball, and the hitter said this too, was really impressive. I think a lot of people were impressed with that fastball last oh, night. Absolutely. Especially when you throw a good fastball through past a good fastball hitter. As in Logoria, I mean, he's a very good fastball hitter. First at bat, he had no chance on the fastball. And then to set it up with the curve. Yep. So Rivera's up with bases loaded. After meeting in the mound, first pitch is in the dirt, 1 0. Let's see if Adam can roll a double play ball here. I change up and one ball one strike. At third base is Butler at second base is Beckham he has good speed Elmore is over at first. Field alignment and yeah. see where guys are. Freddie Galvez is shaded toward the hole. But not playing double play depth. No. And it must be because when they were, uh, Rivera doesn't run very well, I'm assuming. They may be cheating to get a little extra space. But he's not over toward the middle a little bit either, so right. the spray charts must say, all right, let's cut off that hole a little bit. Just missed inside. 89 on that fastball. See Chooch set up inside, low and inside. Oh, good call. Yeah, just a little bit. Good pitch, good location though. Set up a good changeup right here, maybe. Slider. Yeah, he throws the slider and it stays even two and two. Ball down the right field line. It'll be out of play, and the count will remain two and two. So Rivera is having a so far as has a six pitch at bat. This will be the seventh. He had one hit in yesterday's game. He went. Yeah. Boy, that was a heck of a pitch right there. 
first strikeout for Adam Morgan and it came at the perfect time. He threw a slider for the second time in this at bat. Well, the scouting report is two strikes. He enjoys that slider down and into right handers. That's what you see right there. Very good slider. Something we've seen this year with right handed hitters swing at a slider is they don't pick the rotation up very well. They're committed to thinking it's a fastball. Well, now Oda Rizzi, and he chops it out towards shortstop. Galvis is there. Easy play to Hernandez. Excellent job by Adam Morgan to work out of a bases loaded one out jam to get the bottom of the order. Middle of the second, Phillies two, Rays nothing. Live from Douglas Candies and Hot Spot on the Boardwalk. Rise and shine with Bob at the beach Friday morning from 6 until 8 on the Comcast Network. Also uh, on Friday morning, MMA fighter Matt Rizzo will be with the folks in the Bob studio. Ruben Frank will be along, talk a little football. Ruben was also here a couple of nights ago, so he can touch on baseball if he needs to do as well. Bottom of the second, Phillies lead it 2 nothing. And Cody Ashey will lead things off. It is a gorgeous day. I mean, this is a Chamber of Commerce day here in Philadelphia. I mean, look how beautiful it is. Light breeze, great to be outside. Now, last night, the breeze was more of a wind as a front was coming in. And if you talk to the folks in the Rays dugout, they think that Cody Ashey's at bat where he hooked a, a foul ball. Deep down the right field line, foul. Well, of course, it's a foul ball. That was where the game could have turned a little bit because they think if there was no wind and there wasn't just a few minutes earlier, he could have had a long home run. As he pops that foul, it's 0 and 2. All right, take a look, Matt. The wind was blowing. I mean, it was gusting in the 20s. I mean, you can see the ball right here, 25, 30 feet fair. Then all of a sudden, the wind just took it. 60 70 feet foul. And they have a great view from the dugout where they are. Look out. Oh. Skipped off the roof of the dugout into the crowd. Got that young lady right in the side of the face. Looks like she's okay. Hopefully she is. I think she's laughing now, which is great. Oh, Lord. Hit it right in the nose. Oh, in the shoulder. Okay. Oh, and two to Ashy, and a fastball on the outside corner. So he's down looking, and one away here in the second. On the Toyota Major League scoreboard, there's a few day games today. Jimmy Rollins has an RBI double to help the Dodgers lead the Braves at the bottom of the fifth inning. It's three to one. So we will see Jimmy Rollins as we roll into August. Adam Morgan is up. 
Morgan takes at the knees. It's 0 and 1. Matt Adams said to me yesterday is here's the uh, young lady who was hit by the bat and she's just going to get some ice I think. Looks like she'll be okay. Chopper third base side kicked by Longoria. And that'll probably be an E5. Seventh error of the year for Longoria. But Adam said to me yesterday, he said, hey, what did Matt say that somehow got me my first major league hit? He said someone showed him a video. And I said, well, what he said was, I said basically what he said was when you're facing Jose Fernandez, that there was no way you were going to get a hit there. That at first at bat, he had no chance. He had right. no balls, two strikes. I didn't say anything. I think what everything got mixed up was that as soon as he hit it, yeah. I yelled, there it is. And then it went over Mike Morris's head, so people are giving me credit why I do not know. Oh, okay. That's a bad decision by Rene Rivera. Morgan is safe at second base. Revere's safe at first. It wasn't a great bunt because it wasn't far away from Rene Rivera. But I don't know if he had a play at second base. The ball stops right on home plate. You know. Honestly, Tom, if, if he makes a strong throw, but watch how he comes up with throw. Instead of going up and spinning, right there oh, he yeah. kind of opens up and he never gets closed to make a strong throw. But hey, hats off to Adam Morgan. He's going very hard in the second base. Yeah, I, I don't know, Matt. I, that would have been really close. It would have been very close. But they scored a fielder's choice in an E2. That may be one that'll get changed. Two runners on, one out. And it's outside one to know. Anyway, he was wondering why you were being credited with helping him with his first hit. He didn't know if you were giving some teaching moment. If there was something that you had planted a seed or something no, like that. All it was, as soon as he hit it, I yelled, there it is. So I watched Mike Morris's route. Well, you did an excellent job with your there it is. Thank you. And I think he was very appreciative of it. Well, he's I had nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> and he watched the video also, and uh, he wondered the same thing. And I did too. It was all over the internet, and I'm like, I didn't do nothing. Anything. Well, he's on because of Longoria's error, and then the error on the fielder's choice by Rivera, and the Phils have two runners on. A fly ball to left. Butler's under it. Two away. And that Revere bunt, just to kind of clean it up a little bit, he was bunting for a hit there, I think. I mean, he wouldn't bunt for a sacrifice with one out in the pitcher at first, right? Yeah, that's an area where I think, this is me personally thinking this, if you're going to try for a, a bunt base hit and you do not get a base hit, but you advance somebody, it's a sacrifice. Well, that's why I do think that will eventually be a sacrifice. Because you have no idea what's going through Ben Revere's mind at that point when he laid a bunt down thinking I'm going to sacrifice or I'm going to bunt for base hit. Cesar takes high one to know Cesar Hernandez walked his first time up. And there's no real rule book for official scorers but I know that they have been told to. err on the side of that what right. you just said. To give the benefit of the doubt to the hitter. So why would it be E2? Because they're saying that he could have had him at second base. Okay. They're assuming they could have had him. Correct. But you thought with a good throw that they had a chance to get him. Right? I, did. I did. Not until he didn't do the circle. Once he didn't do the, uh, the spin throw, he had no chance. 2 0 pitch coming to Hernandez. Then Revere at first, Adam Morgan at second. Already four three ball counts for Oda Rizzi. That's why it's his four three pitch, 43rd pitch, 44th pitch right there.
Well, if the Raiders keep up the way they do and the, have done in the past and go to the bullpen second time around, young man, not going to be around for the third inning. <laughs> He's had a few outings like that. Third time around, the order, sorry. Runners will be off on this pitch with a count three and two and two men down here at the bottom of the second. Ball four. Hernandez walks for a second time. And Ryan Howard for a second time will come up with the bases loaded. Follow the Phillies wherever you are with MLB.com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay reviews. Radio broadcast, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. It's one of those apps that, if you're a baseball fan, if you want to get caught up on even highlights of specific games, like the Cubs' extra inning victory last night, where the Schwarber kid had an unbelievable day, they'll show you highlights on that app. Howard hits it towards center field, and it's knuckling right at Geyer. And the side is retired. No runs, no hits. Three men left, one error for the Rays. Actually, two. We'll go to the third. Fills up two zip. It'll be Brandon Geyer, Steven Souza Jr., and Evan Longoria up against Adam Morgan, who's getting a chance to pitch the day after Aaron Nola pitched last night and pitched so effectively for six innings. And speaking of Aaron Nola, yeah, you got to give scouts some credit for what they see from a young man. And Greg Murphy's with that scout right now. I am. I'm with uh, Mike Stauffer, who's been with the Phillies organization for 14 seasons and uh, has the distinct pleasure to watch two guys that he signed. Uh, Aaron Ola today uh, last night and Adam Morgan today. Uh, that's got to be quite a thrill. The Phil said, "Come on out and watch your guys uh, get a chance to perform in the big league." It really was, and to do it here with the fans in Philadelphia, I think it means a lot to both those kids. And obviously, me being here, being asked by the front office, it felt great seeing them for the first time. And uh, hope th uh, Adam does well today. You're uh, obviously your territories down in Louisiana and Alabama, the Panhandle of Florida, down in that area, which is where you saw uh, these young men. Uh, let's let's start with the guy on the on the hill today, Adam Morgan, who uh, you know caught your eyes a couple years back. What did you like about him then, and as that one falls foul, and what do you like uh, what you're seeing today? Yeah, Adam uh, came from Georgia, and then when I saw him his sophomore year, uh, he just competed, and he had three pitches that day, and had a little conference call out there with a the coach. He handled it, uh, some pressure, came back, and uh, went right after some hitters. And I just felt from that moment that the following year he was a guy that I was going to see early and often for the next year. So the Phillies uh, reach out and grab him at, uh, at that moment, and then, you know, he battles injuries. And we, you and I were just talking a little bit about that. Uh, the way he's come through what was a very serious injury for a pitcher uh, has really impressed you. Yeah, Adam, uh, work ethic is tremendous, and obviously the people have helped him. 
uh, in the minor leagues and any of the pitching coaches has worked with him. He's got great work ethic. And he's uh, battled it for a few years, but it's, I'm glad to see him out here again. All right, we said that ball uh, landed foul, but they are going to take a look at that. So we'll continue our conversation. Well, there was a buzz in the ballpark, Mike, last night, and uh, you were a part of that as Aaron Nola took the hill for the very first time, a kid that you watched uh, down at LSU, and even before that. Uh, and and again, you you knew that this kid had the potential to be something special uh, early on when you saw. I think uh, the one thing about Aaron was is his composure. You saw that early uh, in his high school career, and you saw it three years at LSU. And I had a lot of confidence in him every time out that he was able to go out and throw strikes. You know, and then we brought in our scouting department to see him. Uh, I think every start except for one, and it was pretty much status quo on his abilities, being able to locate his pitches and throw them for strikes. As they continue to look at this one, uh, it, it appears perhaps it hit that line. I think it is going to be a fair ball uh, that they're figuring out where the base runner should be most likely. You know, the, the job of a scout in an organization like the Phillies, it's really interesting. I mean, the lifeblood, really. I mean, you guys are out there, uh, you know, at the ground level looking for the players that could make a difference in the big leagues five, six, seven years down the road. Um, it's not an easy job by any stretch. Uh, it, it's quite a grind, but I, I would imagine on days like yesterday and today, it's got to be pretty rewarding, huh? It was a good feeling being here in Philadelphia. Uh, obviously, all the guys that go out there in the field and go to a ballpark every day looking for the best player we can find for Philadelphia. And it's based on recommendation, and, and you're maybe your eyes see something different than somebody else. And then just communicating with the rest of the department and, and making sure we get a chance to stop in and see these players. So from Philadelphia and the big leagues today, where are you headed tomorrow? Tomorrow I'm, uh, I'm getting sent back down to the Appy League. <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll be scouting that uh, area for the next uh, month before I get a chance to maybe come back and I'll pick up uh, Milwaukee when Philadelphia is up there later on this summer. All right, Mike, all I can say is uh, do the best you can and hopefully you get the call back up, uh, get the call back up to Philadelphia at some point. Uh, uh, their play is under review as well. I think it, they're saying it's a fair ball at this point. So, uh, Mike, we're going to say goodbye. Thanks so much for, for your time. Congratulations on finding both of these guys and continued success down the road. Thank you very much. All right, guys, let's send it back upstairs. All right, Murph. Uh, and what took so long, Murph said about the placement of the runner, that is indeed what they were looking at. They wanted to make sure that Geyer was still around the first base bag when the ball landed and was picked up. And they have to look at everything. After they decide that the play was fair, they look and they have cameras overhead to see this, where the base runner was, and they deemed him at first base. So it is a single. Two minutes and 13 seconds was the time for the review. So Steven Souza Jr. will be the batter with a runner at first. And he sh hits that one sharply right past Andres Blanco. So he's seen two pitches today, and now he's got a hit and a fly out to left. So two runners on with nobody out. Take a look. This is where the base runner was when the ball hit the ground. So that's where why they deemed him to be at first base. If he had been around the first base bag, what would you think, Matt? Seven or eight feet? You know, it's interesting because if the play kept on going, he would have been out of second base because he was going for two. Yeah. And the first base umpire, Gabe Morales, you saw the replay we showed when Murph was uh, doing his interview. And he's talking to Mike. He was shielded by Ryan Howard. He tried to see where that ball was, and I think he felt like he had the best view of it. One and zero to Longoria, and they've got him picked off second base. They won't have to review that one. Beautiful move by Adam Morgan. Well, you're right, Matt. He would have eventually been thrown out at second base. <laughs> well, this play usually never works, but this is a great inside move. Strong throw. Good take by Hernandez right there. He's going. Oh, better get back too late. <laughs> the 
So I thought they might have reviewed this. I thought they were going to also. <laughs> because the tag kind of. It was Phantom. Tagged him in the chest. Yeah. And his hand was already on the back. Out toward right center field. Revere on the run. Looks like he's got a beat on it. And there are two outs. Murph, I know we were interrupted. You were going to ask us our first question after <laughs> talking to Mike, unless Mike was going to ask us a question. I wasn't well, it, sure. Yeah, Mike was going to ask you a question, but because of the replay, that we decided that uh, we'd wait on that. So here is the first ask the announcer's question for today on the CSN Philly Facebook page. It's from Jason Yu, and they said, when will Crawford be brought? We're seeing some of the young guys be brought up. So when, when is Crawford mm. going to get up to the big leagues? Well, I think that question should go down about one, two, three stations to our left. <laughs> <laughs> well, do your best to answer that. Well, I think JP has shown as the throw behind the runner goes off Souza and into right field, and Souza's going to go to second base. And it'll be an E2, seventh error of the year for Carlos Ruiz. JP uh, has shown not only an ability to adapt to every level, but defensively, there are those that think he's already a major league shortstop. I think at some point next year, I mean, that's just my personal opinion, without seeing him daily basis on a daily basis and looking at his numbers, I would think maybe a call up in September, but I think for sure next year at some point. Yeah, and I'm thinking that uh, there will be no call up in September. Okay. I'm thinking uh, June 23rd, 2016. <laughs> wow. Well, that's really specific. specific. Yeah. Someone write that down. I just did. 1 0 pitch. It's sharply foul and it's one and one. Here's the way I look at it. The the worst thing, the worst case scenario is that he stays another year in the minor leagues, gets more at bats, gets stronger, uh, gets to play against older players in AAA. Uh, getting more at bats will not hurt. That's for sure. So yeah, they may move him up to AAA at some point this year, toward the end. But he's been in single A and now in double A. What about you, Murph? What do you think? I would I would tend to agree with uh, with you guys. I certainly don't think we'll see him this year, um, but uh, and I would imagine he'll start the season next year at the AAA level. But I could see midway through next next season, depending on uh, you know how he performs at the AAA level, that uh, that we could see him. Certainly by the end of next year, I think we'll get a glimpse. Matt, you were much more specific than uh, Murph was. Well, and also I think you got to see how the team is doing next year at the, at the time. And Very true. If people are healthy, if people are hitting the ball well, yeah, we'll see from there. Adam Morgan, nice job once again. He's through three, has a two nothing lead as we go to the bottom of the third. McDonald's with a double cheeseburger and small fry for just 250. McDonald's, I'm loving it. And buy Nissan. Choose Nissan today for great offers on our most exciting lineup ever. ShopNissan.com. Last of the third. As for Nelly, he's got some folks roaming around there today. Last night, 
Uh, it was packed out there, which was a great thing to see. Good sized crowd. Andres Blanco will lead it off. First pitch is out toward left, and Joey Butler wanders under it to make the catch. One away. And Dominic Brown's coming up. Dominic singled his first time up. Andre's not happy that he. Uh, I don't know. I don't think he's disappointed. He swung at the first pitch. I think he's disappointed he missed that pitch. Yeah, I would agree. He had a pitch to hit, and he kind of got big with the swing and jammed himself. Yeah, three hits. Ninety-one, and he was late on it. It's zero and two. Two high fastballs in a row, and it's the second strikeout for Odorizzi. This is the swing right here where you're sitting off speed. Realize you sit wrong pitch fastball coming in. It's called the 911 swing. You just try to swing late and you foul it off. It's probably a little out of the strike zone, but it was a ball. you try to protect as best you can. Well, and especially if you're looking for and I'm just by looking at the swing, to me it looked like he was sitting change up and reacted to a fastball. Two balls and no strikes to Ruiz. Well, we mentioned that Oda Rizzi was a former number one pick. It was back in 2008. He was the 32nd selection by the Milwaukee Brewers. He's been involved in a couple of big trades during his career. Went from the Brewers to the Royals in the Zach Greinke trade and went from the Royals to the Rays. In the James Shields trade, so there are several teams that thought he would he could be pretty special. Threw just seven pitches to get through the third here in Philadelphia. Quality and their jet intelligent toner cartridges print up to one third more pages. Hmm. Get yours from who? But WB Mason today and experience the difference. Nobody beats WB on HP. Top of the fourth, Phillies lead it two to nothing. Butler, Beckham, and Elmore. Adam Morgan's been comfortably uh, good so far. First three innings on this 22nd of July. The former Phil Mike Sweeney celebrates his birthday. And Giants pitcher Ryan Vogelsong out of Kutztown celebrates his birthday, as does Richie Adario, who's celebrating his 81st birthday today. Richie, we love having your daughter around here at the ballpark and always have, and we appreciate you allowing her to be here every day. 
and we wish you a happy 81st birthday. As Joey Butler lines the first pitch into left center for a hit. So he's two for two. It's just kind of a flat fastball right there. Yeah. Get me over first pitch fastball. A lot of movement on it. I also like to wish my mother in law, oh. Sylvia, a happy birthday. She watching in Canada? No. Okay. She's eating right now with, with the family, having a late lunch. Down low, it's 1 0. Leasing the kids taking her out to lunch. That is correct. Beckham squibbed a single through the hole on the right side his first time up. Slide step there, and it's now three and zero to Beckham with Jake Elmore on deck. Well, Morgan's done well today. He has worked uh, through some base runners though the last couple of innings, but this is his first three ball count of the afternoon. A lot of people wonder, you know, Mike Stopper was talking about the surgery that Morgan came back from and the injury. They wonder how what his ceiling is now for his fastball. You know, it was 92, 93 before the surgery. We've seen him top off at 91, 92 now, but not consistently. That's a fair ball going down to the corner. Nashie digs it out, they'll hold Butler at third, and Beckham will stroll into second. And that puts runners on second and third with nobody out. Well, we, we talk about how important it is for pitchers to get ahead in the first pitch. Well, for guys like an Adam Morgan who are, out, are not pow overpowering, you need to get ahead just to make that change up on the curveball and slider even better. He missed his target there. It was supposed to be a fastball away. Pulled the fastball inside. Beckham tucked his hands in and kept it fair. So, well, so important, sorry, Tom, so important for guys who are not overpowering. That first pitch strike is a must. The swing. And that slider, which we've seen him utilize for a strike three today with Rene Rivera, he uses it to start out 0 1 to Elmore. And we're seeing a, 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 a more aggressive hitting team today, Tampa. Fly ball down the left field line. That'll hook foul. And I and I honestly think that they want to stay away from that slider. It is that good with two strikes. They know he has a very good changeup. You know we've seen it against Cole Hamels in the past that teams who go out and you know jump all over the first pitch fastball. We do not want to get those changeup or slider. Or it's because it's travel day and they want to get out of here. <laughs> they are going home. That's a strike. Oh man. I think he surprised everybody with that fastball. I mean, he's set up off the plate, but you know, pretty good pitch. Carlos was jumpy a little bit with that too. Maybe that hampered the home plate umpire. One ball, two strikes to 
Jake Elmore. Fly ball right side. Cesar Hernandez is under it. Time now for our Jeep Stump the Fans trivia question. Log on to Phillies.com. Go to the fan section for all the information. Please submit your answer on the subject line. All right, Matt, who was the last Rays manager prior to Joe Madden in 2006? The last Rays manager prior to Joe Madden in 2006. You understand the question? I'll give you a verbal clue. I don't even, I don't think. All right, son. But I will take a verbal clue. He just gave it to you. Oh, verbal clue, son. <laughs> All right, son. All right, son. Ben used to tell us that, that was his answer to everything. <laughs> All right, son, I like that fire. I would wonder Rene Rivera, who struck out his first time up. One ball, one strike. This guy used to have the best snaps of anybody. Not the game snaps, but chopper foul when he was mad at an umpire or a player. <laughs> he would snap. Oh, I thought you were talking about Rivera. I'm like, what? No, the answer You're talking to the, the answer question. to the question. Yeah, and it's not, and it's not Lloyd McClendon. No, someone better. Yep. You have to wait three or four innings. Yes. <laughs> one two pitch. That one got away, and it's two and two. Is that a cross up? No, Tooch might have just seen something. He won that pitch away. And again, he overthrew it and pulled it inside. And as you can see, where Tooch is set up off the plate, he just overthrows. So three balls and two strikes. He tried to change up to Rivera. Second three ball count of this inning. Oh, there's a third. Beckham's at second. Beckham has good speed. And as a hitter right here, you're thinking, okay, you need to get the ball up in the zone. Anything low is going to be a ball. Swing and a miss. He got him with a curve ball. That must be the 1.6 percent of the time. Second strikeout for Morgan. Both times he's gotten Rivera. And now he's going to try to see his way through this inning against Odorizzi. Well, for the time to throw your first curveball for a strike the whole year, he picked the right time to do it. <laughs> he did his first time he's thrown a curveball for a strike. Well, you told me two surprising things today: the changeup and the curve. Oda Rizzi takes low, 1 0. Still overplaying that pitch right there. That wasn't as bad, but he you know, Chooch wants that fastball away. Just kind of getting outside the baseball and pulling it a little bit. See how he's slamming the ball into his glove. He's done that a few times today, so you can tell that he isn't happy with his mechanics at this point. Two and two. Got some help right there. Yeah, he did. You know, a lot of times, you know, I know they'd love to have a quick tempo. Get on the mound, go. Let's 
Let's throw some pitches. It's not a bad thing to back off the mound, go get some rising, take a deep breath, get your thought cross back into the, the good spot. Two balls, two strikes to Oda Rizzi. And he tried something soft and it misses. It's three and two. All of a sudden, his pitch count is up over 60, which is a hair above the of the average of 15 per inning. Got him. 89 mile an hour fastball back to back strikeouts for Morgan against the bottom of the order. That's been helpful here today. Back in the second, here in the fourth. We'll move to the bottom of the fourth inning. The Phil's still nursing a two run lead. Dealer at ChevyDealer.com. Buy Yellowwood brand pressure treated pine. If it doesn't have this yellow tag, you don't want it. And buy Jefferson where help is all we do. Call 1 800 Jeff now or visit Jefferson.edu. Phillies lead it 2 0. It's time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. We're not talking about lifting, we're talking about your strongest supportive Philly photo. Use hashtag Philly Photo Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. Brought to you by T Mobile. Bottom of the fourth inning, and it'll be Cody Ashey, Adam Morgan, and then the top of the order against Jake Odorizzi. Pretty good crowd here today, Tom. Well, it's a beautiful day. There's, there's some campers that are up uh, in the upper deck. Getting a chance to watch a little baseball last night. The crowd was at 28,703. Now it's not like the old days when the Phils were winning divisional championships, but it was a very electric atmosphere today. Adam Morgan's doing his job. The bottom of the order is helping. But he still leads a 2 nothing here in the bottom of the fourth. Interesting right there. Two strikes. Beckham goes back to shortstop. Longoria goes to second. I suppose with two strikes, they assume he, that he will not be bunting. So maybe that's the reason why they switch positions. I don't know. I was just wondering why they would do it just when you said that, but you know what? That makes sense. Down the right field line, foul again. Nice play. Again, a well worn in glove. Oh, look how we slowed this baby down. That a boy. Ugh, can of corn. Ball again, and it remains two strikes. A 
a little bit of a glare from the sun, but. I think he was saying I was keeping my eye on the ball. No, oh, that's a little different look at it. <laughs> Another one. Bring a glove, you're not going to be able to make that play. <laughs> Did he just give him his glove? 0 2 pitch. Curve ball popped up foul behind home plate. Well, Cody's battling here. Talked to Pete McCannon today about Cody uh, getting thrown out of third base last night. And Pete was saying, hey, you just can't have it. Because we talked to him about it. He said it was a, an aggressive mistake. That's how Pete labeled it, which is, I think, what we had said last night. So we get a miss. I mean, Cody is struck out. Rivera will give himself a lane. And the putout goes 2 3. Six foul, six foul balls. Murph, did any of them come near you? Yeah, one almost came my way. It was about four rows away. I was going to die for it, but I didn't think the people in front of me would, would appreciate that so much. <laughs> so, so I just let it go. <laughs> hey, you ready for another Ask the Announcer? Yeah. Okay, this one's coming from Joseph Haas on the CSN Philly Facebook page. And he says, with the likelihood of four uh, young guys, four rookies uh, being in next year's rotation, uh, he's talking about that one that's lined back off the pitcher. Nice play. Uh, uh, Nola and Morgan and Gonzalez and Buchanan. Would it make sense, guys, to go to a six-man rotation at any point uh, next season in order, to, no, not to overwork those guys? What are your thoughts on that? The New York Mets are doing something similar to that right now. Yeah, on and off they're doing yeah. it. You're right. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if the Phillies have enough depth to do that. Uh, I would prefer to keep it at a five-man rotation. But if there's a necessity, I mean, then I, I would say it's okay to do it from time to time. Uh, but I would say, for me, Keep it at the five man rotation, Matt. I don't know how you feel about that. I would, uh, right now, I don't see six guys at the top of the, of the rotation. Yeah, I guess that's my thought, yeah. too. Um, I would keep it a five man rotation. You can always yeah, remember next year, though, these guys are going to be probably no restrictions for innings. Yeah, and, and they've already been going on five five days, you know, right. it's been a five man rotation everywhere they've been, so. I think they're used to the four days off and then pitching. So I don't know if you want to get them off that at all. And I also think it really depends on who you're looking at for the rotation next year. Mm -hmm. you know, free agency, cold, yeah. uh, you know, trades going down. What's happening? So yeah, certainly I, a lot can change. I did, sorry, Matt. I, a lot can change over the next, you know, three, four, five, six months as well. Absolutely. They can dictate that, that kind of thing. So me personally, I don't like the six-man rotation. I'd rather see a five-man rotation and, and uh, pick your spots when you give guys an extra uh, an extra day rest. It kind of like the Phillies are doing this weekend where Hamels will get an extra day and pitch Saturday instead of on Friday. That's a good question from Joseph Haas, though. Yep. Thought provoking. We had a couple of others, too. Uh, somebody asked uh, who the best golfer is of the broadcast crew. Uh, I, that was a no brainer. Yeah, though. I don't think anybody can pass Ben. Sorry, Matt. Sorry, Murph. No, I mean, yeah. I, I had Ben number one, I had Murph number two, and I had all the above number three. <laughs> <laughs> I know Ben's watching right now. Yeah. He just sent me a note, but, uh, you know, it, the it, man, the, nobody can hit it. And Matt, you hit it far. Nobody can hit it as far as Ben can consistently. I would say Matt's the best left handed golfer we have. Excellent point. Yeah, Thank he, you. He smokes Ben left handed. Yeah. I'd like to have the category as the best bald headed right handed <laughs> golfer. No, it's got to go to Larry. Yeah, well, he got the comb over. Yeah. 2 0. Oh. Larry, when his, uh, the game isn't in his head, which it's in all of our heads from time to time, but when it's not in his head, he's pretty darn good. Well, Oda Rizzi shaking off that line drive after making the play, and he'll face Revere here, and Revere dumps it in front of the left fielder, Joey Butler. It's his second hit of the day. Here's well, the line drive off of. Yeah, and this is uh, this ball smoked. Oh, what a five! 
feels it right there. When he came down, he was limping so much, I thought, oh, he's in trouble. Murph, well, you meeting the people? Yes, we're meeting the people. We're always meeting the people. Here's something I don't you don't see very often is a shift on For Freddie, Freddie Galvis. Galvis. Yeah. Ball, no strikes to Galvis. He's one for two. And he slaps it foul. He's trying to hit that ball to shortstop. You know, I just don't understand shifts. Right, the, because he, now they're going back. Right, and he was creeping over and over. The reason why you want the shift is you want him to try to hit the ball to left field. Rudder goes, pitches hit foul down the left field line. Then when he makes the attempt to hit the ball to left field, you start creeping over back and back and mm -hmm. back. Well, you're getting away from the purpose of having the shift. Pull hitter, and Freddie has turned him to be a pull hitter. I mean, his last, uh, at, at least this series. <laughs> He's just getting away from the purpose of what you were trying to do. Well, they are making Oda Rizzi work, even though he got the first two batters. A strikeout and a line drive. The first hitter, Cody Ashey, made him work. Nine pitch at bat, six foul balls. And Freddie's making him work here. Sooner or later, you would think they would try to waste a fastball. About letter high. Trying to go two seamer away. And he gets him. He went upstairs on it. Four strikeouts for Oda Rizzi after a seven pitch at bat. Galvis is retired. Phillies leave one. We'll head to the fifth inning. Phillies up two nothing over the Rays.
be a quiz answer. All right, Matt, here we go. Who was the last Rays manager before Joe Madden in 2006? Sweet Lou Pinella. Sweet Lou Pinella was was true. 200 wins, 285 losses from 2003 through 2005. Log back on to Phillies.com. To find out if you're a winner of Phillies prize pack, here are the Rays managers over the years. Former Phil's hitting coach Hal McRae is on that list. Larry Rothschild. He was the first one. He was the original. And 37 year old Kevin Cash, who, like Lou Pinella, is a Tampa native, is currently the skipper. Brandon Geyer, one for two this afternoon. Singled and was picked off second base after that base hit. And he leaned right into that pitch. Well, if ever there's something that a manager can question, that would be one of them. Doesn't happen that often anymore. But he certainly leaned. There's Kevin Cash. He stepped into it and they didn't move. Yeah, I guess that's a better you know, description. Yeah, leaning of it. it was the upper body. That's his normal stride. Wore it in the calf and at the first base. He has stolen 10 bags. You got to keep an eye on him. He doesn't have a big lead. Outside, 1 0. Probably get somebody up soon in the pen. Although he's only at 67 pitches. Probably Deakman. That looks like DeFreitas would be the first one. Oh, but that's Deakman? You did. DeFreitas is the long guy. Well, they're always walking together. You see them from time to time. Uh, I got mixed up because of the jerseys they had on the other day. Right. Line drive caught by Galvis at shortstop. One out. Oh, actually, it's a nice pitch down low. Freddie's showing the ups. I guess he didn't have to get up. He, you know what? He kicks his legs up to make it look higher. <laughs> That's how we used to do it, Matt. Well, we're one pitch away from getting another inning. If you could roll a double play ball, Longoria has flied out twice once to Ashy, once to Revere. Takes a curve, and it's 0 and 1. He's thrown two curve balls today for strikes. Two for strikes. That pitch is for the umpire. Well, live auction going on right now. Nola's first MLB hit. It's for sale. Starting bid is two thousand dollars. If anybody's interested. One ball, one strike. Inside. Well, I guess he never got the baseball last night, then, huh? He got the baseball, but they better be careful. Don't you remember when you get the base hit? We panned on the parents. Yeah. Their point, point we get the baseball, get the baseball. Well, they get the baseball, right? But you better be careful because that two grand, it will jump up. You would think that somebody would be able to uh, contribute some money for some some printing capabilities. Two balls, one strike. Foul ball, two and two. They could have made a, a mint after last night. He had his first major league strikeout to 
go along with his first major league hit. First out he had recorded all that kind of stuff. So who do you think is behind that? I, I don't know but the guy next to him might not be a bad person to point to. Pretty good chance. Yeah. Now toward left field Ashy venturing back it's over his head off the wall he smothers it and then bobbles it they're going to send the runner home Galvis throw to the plate is not in time. Cody just got a little too close to the fence otherwise they would have stopped the runner at third base. Instead it's an RBI double for Longoria and it's a 2 1 ball game. Yeah, you're right, Tom. He gets a little too close, then he bobbles it. And Bomber is heading out to the mound. So Longoria picks up his 42nd RBI. It's only his second hit in his last 26 at bats. You no, know, it, it's interesting on that play, and, and you know, with, with Cody, should be back away from the, a wall a little bit. Um, yeah, but the key is, is when he threw the ball and he made a strong throw to Freddie Galvis. That Freddie Galvis was his back was to the play. That makes sense. Yeah. Like when you make when you catch a throw from the outfield, you want to catch it to where you're at an angle. Yeah, like you want to be on your side. Right on your side. So, so the momentum he, just carries you. Right. And I thought he what happened was there, and, and would have mattered. Who knows? But. You know, textbook relay is that when you have, you know, you can see Freddie, he should be this way with his shoulders because now when he catches the ball, he has to turn completely around to throw it. And it takes a little longer to get out of the glove where if he catches it on the run, on the go, it's a, you know, a bang bang. Forsyth takes a strike 0 and 1. Forsyth batting cleanup. He's 0 for 2. He's popped out. And he's flied out. Still a one run lead for Adam Morgan, trying to get him through this fifth inning. He's just not getting that pitch. Now, that one looked like it was down and away, but he's not getting the outside. Corner fastball, the umpire setting up in the inside part of the plate. Certainly, he's been up and down inning wise with his pitch count. Camera? Yeah, right off of Charlie's camera. Andy, is everything okay down there with Charlie's camera? <laughs> I think everything's okay. One two pitch in the dirt smothered by Ruiz and it's two and two. And he's making sure Charlie's okay. Charlie's like what are you doing. Well, no wonder. Look at all the tape on that thing. Yeah. It's like it's been hit a few times. I would think it has been. Helps the view. Drive fair down the left field line just past Blanco and the Rays will tie this game up. Going to second base is Forsyth. It was rolled around by Ashy. It would have mattered. And Longoria scores. So it's a 2 2 game here in the top of the fifth inning. Back to back doubles and that's going to be it for Adam Morgan. So Pete McCannon's heading out. They're going to go to the bullpen to bring in the right hander to face Joey Butler who's already two for two. 
So a pitching change for the Phils. Adam Morgan's afternoon is done after four and a third. And we'll be back right after this. to the 24th, 2016 in Clearwater, Florida. If you're 30 years old or older, it's your chance of a lifetime. It includes a fantasy game versus the legends at Wright House Field. A Phillies uniform, so much more. You get practice and instruction from baseball legends like the Bull, John Cruck, Mike Lieberthal, Mickey Moore and Didi. Matt Stairs may even be there. Go to phillies.com or call 610-520-3400 for more information. Well, the major league leader in innings pitched this year is Justin DeFreitas. He's going to take over for Adam Morgan. Adam, a little frustrated with himself today. He didn't have the same command of his fastball, yep. Matt, that he had in his last outing. So he'll give way to DeFreitas, who is 0-1 with an ERA of 4.76. He's got a runner at second base. Two runs are in here in the fifth inning in a 2-2 game. And David DeJesus will pinch hit for Joey Butler. Jesus against righties, you can see his numbers. He has 57 hits against righties, just one against left handers. Up high, and it's 2 0. DeFreitas last worked on the 19th against the Marlins, so just a couple days ago. Pitched one inning. I should say two innings. Probably looking for two here in place of Adam Morgan. Interesting to see first pitch. To De Jesus change up fastball change up. Well, now he throws a slider and he throws it right past him and the runner goes to third. It'll be ball four. Well that is not the way you want to begin an outing. So a wild pitch. And a walk and runners on first and third for. It's supposed to be Becca but it looks like it's going to be James Loney. Well, they're rolling the dice here. They're, they've used two of their bench players in this inning. Lodi well, two for two. Now he is a double play candidate just because of the, the lack of speed. And the Phillies could use a double play here with a runner at third, a runner at first. And one man down. Just 
This is the third walk issued by Philly's uh, relievers since the end of the since the beginning of the second half. And there's a line drive base hit into left center field. That's going to drive in another run. Going to third base is DeJesus. The throw goes to second. So it's 3 2 Rays. They've scored three in this inning. And James Loney is three for three as a pinch hitter this season. And again, runners on first and third. This time for Jake Elmore. Takes down and away, 1 0. He can close the book on Adam Morgan, three runs all earned. 80 pitches for Phil's left hander. Well, Matt, we got a little bit of a command issue right here for it, Justin DeFreitas. We do, and it's. You know, it's interesting. We, we talked about the Hazers to change up the fastball, change up slider, and then all of a sudden, until first pitch out or half to Loney, who's a good fastball hitter. Just looks like his windups a little, his, his delivery's delivering. Looks like he's turning his body a lot. Play and it's three and two. Elmore singled his first time up, popped out his last time up. He's now four for his last 34. Short lead for Loney off first. He goes, pitches foul back. Well, you get a strikeout. You got a strikeout, throwout, double play here because James Loney does not run well at all. I think Carlos may have gotten a piece of that backswing. High fastball. Yeah, yep. Elbow. I just can't see James Loney doing a straight steal here. No. He's got to be stopped at three quarters away, and hopefully David DeJesus can steal home. He goes again. Three. Swung on a miss. The throw to second base. They've got him dead to rights. It looked like he's thought about stopping, but then he kept on going. It's a strikeout, throwout, double play. Side is retired. Three runs do score in the inning for the Rays. So they erase the deficit, take the lead. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth. It's 3-2, Tampa Bay.
Tuesday, August 4th. It's part of a three game series, two night games, and then the last day is a Citizens Bank business person special. That'll begin at 105 and also given out a Citizens Bank Pride of the Phillies print featuring the Phillies mural. And after the game, it's Nemours Kids Run the Bases. That's for fans 14 and under. Order your tickets now by going to Phillies.com. Also, check out Phillies.com or MLB.com for all the latest highlights and statistics, some news and notes around Major League Baseball whenever you get a chance. James Loney stays in to play first base. Elmore moves from first base to shortstop. And David DeJesus stays in the game to play left field as we begin the bottom of the fifth. Cesar takes low, one ball, one strike. Behind third, Longoria in foul territory puts it away. So one out for Ryan Howard is coming up. Let's check in with Greg Murphy. Murphy, you got another question? I do. We're going to ask the announcers this question. This one's coming from a Brian R. And I think it's a great one. What is your favorite rivalry in all of sports? It doesn't have to be baseball, all of sports. Matt, I'll let you go first on this one. The Montreal Canadiens <laughs> yeah. versus the Boston Bruins. I think those two teams hate each 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 those two teams hate, hate each, each other, other more than it gets them so the angry. Eagles and Cowboys. Mm. Ooh. That's saying something. Ryan Howard pulls it fair over the first base bag, and there are two outs. You know, I, I'm going to have to say, I mean, there, there's the Duke North Carolina rivalry is a great one. The Yankees Red Sox rivalry is a, a great one to watch, although it seems to be on national television all the time, and it gets kind of tiring. Um, I'm going to say watching the big five matchups, you know, the St. Joseph's against Villanova, St. Joseph's against Temple and basketball. I mean, those to me, you know, th those are, and I've gotten a chance to do a lot of those games on radio and television. Those are a lot of fun to be part of. Those, those rivalries, those basketball rivalries. Yeah, it, it's a no-brainer for me. It's, it's St. Joe's Villanova. Mm -hmm. It's the Holy War. It's me versus my brother-in-law it's you know <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's been ever since i stepped foot on campus at st joe's that game has yeah. always been uh, the one that uh, that you just waited for i mean all the other big five matchups are awesome too but st joe's villanova there's something special about that they've gotten the best of us over the last couple of years but, and also I, I think if you look at any hockey and yes i'm going to talk about hockey i mean the, the hatred between the flyers and penguins mm -hmm. the flyers and the rangers you know, the teams have been around for quite a while despise each other but when you go to a hockey game between Montreal and Boston, and you're getting ten fights, eight fights per game, yeah, uh, not a lot of love there. Well, fortunately, uh, that question has taken us through the bottom of the fifth inning, or unfortunately, that one question because that's just a nine pitch inning. We'll go to the sixth. Phillies trail it by one.
hoping to start the second half the way he finished the first. Ben Revere struggled through April, improved in May, then took off through June and the start of July. Getting on base at the top of the lineup is important, and he did so, reaching an on-base percentage of 452 in July, heading into the break. Once on base, he continues to cause problems with his feet. Ben's first half success is brought to you by Independence Blue Cross. Live fearless. Well, Ben Revere has a couple of hits here today. The Phillies, though, trail it by one as we go to the top of the sixth inning. Rene Rivera leads it off against Justin DeFreitas, and he takes high. It's 1 0. DeFreitas uh, picked up for Adam Morgan. A lot of walk a single then got a strikeout after Morgan left the game after four and a third. Adams been charged with the three runs that have scored. 1 0 pitch. Chopper over to third backing up on it Blanco. A strong throw. Every time the Phillies pitchers retire the opposition one two three which Adam did in the first inning. Comcast will make a contribution to Phillies charities. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Xfinity, the official entertainment provider of the Philadelphia Phillies. All right, so Odorizzi is done after five. I would think they're going to have to burn their bullpen out eventually. You would think. But it worked last night. John Jaso pinch hits. Good numbers against right handers. Takes high. By the way, uh, we did receive a, a number of other questions. Uh, one in particular, Matt, uh, received a question uh, for you and I. This does not pertain to you, Murph, although you can answer if you'd like to. Hmm. You guys, hair products. I <laughs> uh, wanted to know how jealous we are of Ben's hair. Zero. 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 Absolutely. Looks like it's just too much work to keep it still. Thank you. <laughs> one one pitch. <laughs> Plus it's fake anyway. <laughs> We're going to get a text in three, two, <laughs> two balls, one strike to Jaso. Outside and it's three and one. It's got to be frustrating for a reliever when you, your mechanics or your command is all over the place like they are right now for Jake. He's walked two in two thirds of an inning of work. That's Gomes, who we haven't seen yet, warming up. The ball's butted in the air. DeFreitas makes the catch. Good play. Two outs. I think that was just to try to bunt for a base hit there for Geyer. Yeah, DeFreitas does a nice play. Interesting though that you, know, you, you just walk the guy ahead of you on five pitches, and then you're going up there and trying to, and it's actually a ball inside. Yeah, it's not a smart play. Steven Souza Jr. is one for three. He's only seen a few pitches here today because he doesn't want to strike out. Takes it side. He's among the leaders in strikeouts. He is third. As we look at our Toyota Major League scoreboard, the Mets lost game one. They won game two. 
And now lead game three against the Nationals. They could pull to within one. Amazing. This division so up for grabs. Nationals have all the talent in the world, and they just. There's, we've said this for the last few years. There's just something missing. One and two to Souza. And he hits that one through the hole on the left side, a base hit. So that's his second hit of the afternoon. And with two on and two outs, Evan Longoria will. Be the hitter. Longoria has doubled and has an RBI and a run scored in the afternoon. His double ended an 0 for 18. And a 1 for 11 in this series. Bob McClure went to the phone. And it looks like they're going to get somebody up. I would imagine it'll be Diekman. A high fly ball down the left field line. Ashy in fair territory waits for it. And the side is retired. So no harm. Just a couple of base runners. No runs, one hit, and two men left. Middle of the sixth. It's just a one run game. But Dominic Brown due to lead it off. Of the Philadelphia Phillies by the Pennsylvania Lottery benefits older Pennsylvanians every day and by Toyota. Where will Toyota take you? Visit buyatoyota.com to find out. Toyota, let's go places. Last of the sixth inning, Dominic Brown will start it off for the Phillies. It'll be Brown, Ruiz, and Cody Ashey, and they'll face Brandon Gomes out of the pen, his 33rd game. Odorizzi, he only threw 80 pitches, but he's done after five. Five innings, five hits, two runs. So it, Dominic Brown will lead it off. It's, it's amazing, though. You, you would think that you would try to get one more inning out of your. Like, there's no set rules. I would agree with that. He's allowed one hit, or he allowed one hit in the last four innings. Now, he walked a batter in the second, you know, allowed the bases to get loaded, but it wasn't all his fault. But one hit in the last four innings, he threw nine pitches in the fifth inning. Now, they pinch hit for him. But, but nobody even, on. But even that, there was nobody on. I don't know. Well, we mentioned it. They have 23 wins this year. 23 of their wins where they've used four relief pitchers. Dominic Brown lines one the other way. It's his fifth 
Or excuse me, sixth multi-hit game. Nice job of beating the shift right there. Telling you, Tom, he's getting there. Dominic Brown, getting there. Swing. he's getting there. I hope so. Carlos is 0 for 2. He's flat out and he's grounded out. But he bunts toward first. That'll be a sacrifice. Nobody's covering first, and they do get Ruiz. One four on the put out. Well, here's Cody who's 0 for 2. He has struck out twice. Cody's now 0 for 12 since the All Star break. Darren Ruff is out in the on deck circle. Want to know? Get one here if he can zero in on a fastball with the count two and zero. Oh. And there's a liner out toward right field. Does it have enough? Going back is Souza. It is off the top of the wall. It gets away from him. Around third, heading home is Brown. Stopping at second is Ashy. It's an RBI double, and we are tied up at three. Nice call, Tom. Boy, I thought that had enough, though. At the end, it kind of just floated a little bit. Yeah. But he'll take the double as 11th of the year. Hits it just off the end of the bat a little bit. See right off the cement. Right in there. That's allowed Donald Brown to score from first base very easily. Now they'll have Darren Ruff pitch hit as we mentioned he was in the on deck circle. They like this matchup. With the lefty warming up. Better than let's say putting Odubel Herrera up. Who is the lefty they have on the bench today. Darren's numbers as a pinch hitter one of his three hits is a is a home run. One ball no strikes to him. Breaking ball. Almost of the hanging variety. Uh, yeah. <laughs> one and one. Those hangers are so easy to hit on TV. Where they're kind of they are hard to react to when you're when you're hitting. Broke his bat. Popped it up. Shallow left center field. It's gonna drop. It does. Ashley had a wait, so he'll stop at third. So a pitch hit single for Darren Ruff. I know you probably wanted to, to get a megaphone into Cody's ear and say <laughs> it's going to drop, it's going to drop, but he had to wait. Well, he did. I mean, it's a tough read. You, it's a the in between ball where your your shortstop's going back, the big swing breaks the bat off the end, you know, off the end, but you got to make sure it drops. Last thing you want to do is someone makes a great play. Worst case scenario, first and third one out. Ben Revere is hitting. Well, and Xavier Sedano, a left-hander, is going to come in to face Ben Revere. So we've got another pitching change. It's not going to be our last one here this afternoon at Citizens Bank Park. Phillies have tied the Rays up at three here in the bottom of the sixth inning.
scholars here at Citizens Bank Park, and they'll do that each and every month for the remainder of the season. Nominations are accepted until uh, about a week or so from now, August 3rd. You can visit phillies.com. Actually, it's a little longer than August 3rd. Uh, phillies.com slash scholar for more information. Two winners will be selected for August and September. Write an essay. Share how you are contributing to the common good through service. Must have a 3.0 GPA or better. Well, the Phils have tied it up. Six runs on 19 hits combined between the two teams. Xavier Cedeno will be the next one up out of the bullpen for the Rays. Lefty is being brought on to face the left-handed hitting Ben Revere. Now, lefties haven't really bothered Ben Revere all that much during this stretch. He's just making contact. See, 239 since the 1st of June. It's better. He's got two hits today. Ruffs at first. Ashy's at third. Now time is called. Matt, I believe there's a pair of sunglasses that have fallen onto the field. Thank Tom, you, everybody. What's the chance of first pitch curveball or slider? Hmm. Which would be a great pitch to try to lay a bunt down, maybe. Drag it with you for a second. Yeah, get Ashy home. What would be the concern if you try to do that here? Is it the speed of rough at first that you may? No, rough has nothing to do with it. Okay. Because there's one out. I just thought maybe if, if you run it too hard, if it turns into a double play, you no. know, Revere's a tough guy to double up. Yeah, if you, if you punch it, there's no way they're going to turn a double play because his momentum's going to be going towards first base. The only thing is that Ben, I don't, I can't remember in two years him attempting a, a drag one, just popping it up. Hits it toward first, right between the legs of James Loney. A run will score, and the inning is alive again. That's his third error of the series. He came in with only one this year, and the Phillies retake the lead four to three. Wow. They've made three errors here this afternoon. Well, on the replay. Oh, yeah. I thought, I thought it might have come closer of hitting the. The lip of the grass. But he just came up way too early. He just missed it. They do give it RBI to Ben Revere. And the Phillies lead 4-3. to three. They had a 2-0 lead for a good portion of this game until the fifth when the Rays scored three. I just don't forget either. The Rays get a chance to play on astral turf or the artificial turf grass. Where you get true bounces every time. You know, we've seen some players come true. in here. I mean, look at Reyes from the Blue Jays. We haven't seen him yet, but once he gets on dirt, he's a mess. His footwork is, is kind of all over the place. And he's a gifted defender. Well, now Galvis. Galvis is numbers way better right handed than left handed. We've seen James Loney miss three balls in this series that. You just don't see him miss. Runners lead off first and third. Rays a double play depth. Up the third baseline foul. by Rivera to stab that one. Nice to get a little breathing room here. You got a one run lead. Tack on another one or two. He bunts at it. And it's one and two. 
Fortunately, that may have been of the safety squeeze variety, I guess. I mean, Ruff was off the bag, but. Yeah, that might have been a sign that Miserock is giving down, saying, but for base hit. I mean, that, that's the, the way it looks like that the way Freddie Galvis is going after that baseball. Freddie waves at it. He struck. He is struck out. And they're two away. Second time he has struck out today, and it'll leave it for Cesar Hernandez. Rivera is going out in front of home plate because you've got a base stealer over at first. Revere has 22 stolen bases. These signals, I, I would assume, are this is what I'm going to do if he's going to take off. Which would be, I am not throwing for. I would think they'd let him go, yeah. Cesar his last 25 games coming into today hitting 337. How hot was he? Well, that also includes a, uh, a home stand in which he's four for 19. Breaking pitch to these right handed hitters right now. You would think Ben Rivera would be trying to steal right here. Here goes. Pitch is swung on and missed. Back to back strikeouts for Sedeno. The Phillies get a break on the ball that was mishandled by James Loney. And they retake the lead. They get two in the inning on three hits and one error. They leave two base runners.
Time now for your Delaware Valley Honda Dealers game summary. The Phillies lead it four to three, two in the first, two in the sixth. The starting pitchers today, well, there you see their lines. Oda Rizzi, they probably could have stayed in this game, but he's lifted after five, strikes out five. Ben Revere has a couple hits, has an RBI, a run scored for the Phillies. Adam Morgan lasted four and a third. James Loney had a pitch at RBI single, but he also had a costly error in this game. So now as we go to the seventh, Jake Diekman will take over. DeFreitas goes an inning in two thirds. Two hits, no runs, but inherited runners score. Diekman, two and one, and earned run average of 5.05. Diekman pitched a scoreless inning in last night's loss. And he pitched a third of an inning in game one. He's up. Uh, he's in this game now because you've got De Jesus a lefty and Loney a lefty due up in the inning. Brown back toward the fence. Unfortunately, though, the right-hander Forsythe is up and he's just tied the game. Tenth home run of the year, an opposite field home run, and we're even at four. Well, the wind is blowing out in that general area, and he got it up into the wind. You know he hit it pretty good, um, but the wind did help. I mean, he, he does. He hits it pretty good. He hits it up in the air high enough. It just up on carrying to right field for his tenth, tenth home, home run. run, second extra base hit of the day. He has ten home runs, nineteen doubles, and a triple. All career highs. And De Jesus takes way in one and zero. Jesus came out as a pitch hitter, walked it as only at bat. He went around according to Ted Barrett, who's the crew chief. This game's so funny how it runs on momentum and, and turning plays and, and sometimes fumes. Yeah, like first you get first and third is an error, you should take the lead. Right now, all of a sudden, you get the momentum going again. Yep. You don't score with first and third, and then you go out and hit a home run. Yeah, that's a good point. First and third, one out. And they didn't get that run home. Over towards shortstop, Galvis backhands. Thankfully, Ryan Howard dug it out. What away. James Loney's coming up. Let's check in with Murph. Murph. All right, another question. This one coming from uh, Eric T, guys, to the uh, CSN Philly Facebook page, uh, asking who is your favorite player to interview? I guess we'll send that up to you guys first. Well, I'm going to ask you first, Pat. <laughs> what do you got? I mean, uh, Murph, what do you got? I think I just led you to the, the answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, actually, on our team, I think there, there's a couple. Uh, I would say uh, Ryan Howard is always a terrific interview. Excellent interview. Yeah, and, uh, and Jimmy Rollins was always a great interview. Not with us anymore. Yeah, and then certainly Jeff Francoeur still makes alive, the list. still yeah. alive, Murph, but <laughs> yeah. just not with us at the yes, ball club. Yes, right. yeah, certainly. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> didn't mean to imply anything different. <laughs> um, and so I would say those three, those three guys, the three veteran guys that uh, that I've had a chance to you know, spend some time with and talk to a couple of times. Those are three of my favorites. My all-time favorite, and this is this is, this is Jeff Francoeur. He's my all-time favorite because mm. I've interviewed one person in my life, and that came on Sunday. <laughs> and it was Jeff. <laughs> it was Jeff. Well, congratulations, <laughs> uh, Murph. Uh, Paula Abdul make that list for you. Oh well, yeah, but she's not a player. Well, right. <laughs> she's not a baseball player. <laughs> uh, but she, yeah, she was terrific. Boy, that's a great question. Does, you know, it have, does it have to be baseball? No. It could be anybody. It could be a it said player, so hockey player, football player, basketball player. So I'm, I'm going to say, you know, I did an interview with Cliff Lee several years ago, walking in when he came back from the bullpen. I always thought Cliff was a, uh, was a good interview. I really did, from a Philly standpoint. I always thought, and, and I add Rollins to the list as well. 
uh, as Murph talked about Jimmy was Jimmy was always great to talk to during the post game interviews uh, Brad Lidge was always a great interview and I did a million interviews with Charlie Manuel and I know some people didn't always understand everything that came out from Charlie but man if you just listen to some of the things he said oh. yeah, but I'm, what, I mean, you've done football you've done basketball yeah I, from a football standpoint my favorite interview that I've done uh, over the last couple of years is Andrew Luck. Mm. I mean I've gotten a chance to talk to him several times doing some cult games and that kid he has got it all together and he is honest with the things he says. Jake Deakman throws out Elmore. Side is retired. One run scores and the opposite field home run by Logan Forsythe. We'll stretch here at Citizens Bank Park. I'll leave it at four. Phil's franchise. You can also check out CSNPhilly.com. Jim Salisbury uh, talks about the upcoming trade deadline as well. We're tied at four here in the bottom of the seventh inning. HP's new series of color laser jet printers deliver unmatched quality and their jet intelligent toner cartridges print up to one third more pages. Get yours from who? But WB Mason today and experience the difference. Nobody beats WB and HP. Jake McGee. Back in for the Rays. McGee last night allowed a hit, struck out one, walked one, and a scoreless inning of work. Ryan Howard serves one out toward left. And there's one away. These lucky fans are today's Citizen Seven. They were to see a prize pack courtesy of Citizens Bank. Good banking is simple, clear, and personal, and that's helping you bank better. Citizen Bank. So after De Jesus is put out and left, but Ryan Howard one away for Blanco, who is one for three. Fastball 0 and 1. Back toward us. And it's 0 and 2.
About the closest ever. I, it's since I've been up here, yeah. There's there was one that went in that Sarge caught on a rebound and a bounce. That one's back to our right. Hit the wall, hit a young lady enjoying a little ice cream. She wasn't bothering anybody. Nice grab by that young man. Owen two to Andres Blanco. I don't know how you felt though, Matt, getting up and trying to reach for that. Man, I was stiff. <laughs> Don't you remember, Tom? I went and got a coffee, so I was pretty good right yeah, now. Yeah, you were loosened up. McGee is set, and the hard throwing lefty delivers. And he strikes him out. And there are two outs here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Well, last night's game came down to the wire, won by the Rays, one nothing. Looks like today's ball game is going to come down to the wire as well. Dominic has two hits. Well, you said he's close, Matt. Maybe he can get even closer. Two hits last night, two hits today. 110 plate appearances without a home run. And it's 0 1. Got to find your swing first before you start hitting home runs. Let that average creep up. He's at 225 right now. Keep staying with your game plan up the middle, and those home runs will come. That's not a game plan. Right no. There. That's a setup swing. He's setting, setting him up for him another up. one? Setting him up for another curveball. I'll go along with that if you want me to. <laughs> Comes the 0-2 pitch, fastball, rocketed foul. See, that was a better take on the curveball. Mm -hmm. Out to shortstop, charging. Throwing out Brown for the final out. No runs, no hits, nobody left, so nothing across. Seven of the books will move to the eighth, still tied at four. Stores go further. Buy WB Mason. You can't go wrong when you buy right. And buy your Delaware Valley Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Del Val Honda dealer. 
or visit DelBauHondaDealers.com. Not a beautiful day for baseball. We're in the top of the eighth inning, tied up at four. Final game of this three game series. All right, Matt, here you go. Our defensive plays of the game brought to you by Hyundai. Well, we're going to start in the way back in the first inning. Shoots does a very nice job. Peaks where he's going, keeps the eye. Hand coordination going on out there. Makes a very nice play before he goes in and almost, almost gets saved by Frenchy. <laughs> and then nice timing right here. Galvis at shortstop. Timing is late, getting up way up in the air. Making a very nice defensive play. That's why that's your. Hyundai defensive play of the game is brought to you by your local Hyundai dealers. All right, so the top of the eighth inning, Ken Giles takes over. He'll face Renee Rivera and Kevin Kiermeyer. Oh, uh -oh. Miles, look oh. out over the head of Miles Kennedy, the Phillies team photographer. And I that young man is okay. I think he's okay. Ball was helicoptering pretty quickly. What are they doing with the bat? They leave it in the stands. You know, generally they do leave it. Yeah, there we go. Past years they used to give it back. And sometimes the player or the hitter would exchange the. Yeah, they wanted to keep their game right. Right. I don't. I don't see that that often anymore. Usually, if the ball goes into the stands, the or the bat goes into the stands, the bat stays there. As it should. Oh, and one to Rivera. Outside, one ball, one strike, 99 on that fastball. Giles with a 1.94 earned run average. Will be one and done for him here in the eighth. He's due to bat third in the bottom of the eighth. Three balls, two strikes. Out to right field. Long run for everyone. It's going to land in foul territory. And it remains three and two. So I was trying to put Rene Rivera away here. And give the Phil's offense an opportunity again in the bottom of the eighth inning. Got him. Threw him a slider that was biting. What out here in the top of the eighth? Check in with Greg Murphy. Murph? All right, Tom. Uh, well, we're going to ask the announcer uh, another question here, but this one's for one particular announcer because I don't think you and I can answer this. But, uh, Matt, the folks want to know what was your favorite song to walk up to the play with? Your, your walk up song. What was it? Well, the Brendan, I actually only walked up to one song in. Uh, 19 years. Oh, Canada. <laughs> and that was Stone Cold Steve Austin, Glass Shattered. Right there. There you go. Wow. That was a really good song. <laughs> but the lyrics were good. Kiermaier pitch hitting, fouls it away. It's 0 2. I am a huge WWE fan. 
Uh, Jason Giambi used to come out to Ric Flair. Uh, the thing that Papelbon comes out to? No, something no. better. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Tim Raines used to come out to The Rock. Kind of ironic that his name is nickname is The Rock. Mm -hmm. So that is why I've always come out to Stone Cold Steve Austin. Stone Cold Plus, Steve Austin. If you've ever seen the video, Smashing of the Beers. Yeah. Which I'm not saying is a great thing to do, but you've smashed a beer or two from time to time. I have, especially the especially the year of uh, well, last year at um, Wing Bowl. That was a good one. <laughs> two balls and two strikes to Kiermaier hitting 247 up for the first time. They internally had announced that he was in the game previously, but he was not. He'll stay in the game now. I would think. So Murph, if you had an opportunity to be a major league ball player and you were walking out, and Tom, I'm going to ask you the same question. What would you come out to in your walk-up song? Uh, yeah, you're putting me on the spot here. Um, hmm. I think. Uh, wow, I, I'd really have to think about that one. That's a tough one to answer. Just like that. Tom, you got an answer? For you, some, something, Jimmy Buffett. Well, I, I could do a little Jimmy Buffett. Yeah. I could do that. Maybe fins to the left. Yeah. If I was a switch hitter, I could do both fins to the left and fins <laughs> to the right. <laughs> Let's go with that. Uh, I'll go Billy Carrington's people are crazy. How about that? You know what? I actually lied. I actually. We knew you were I lying. I fibbed for a second. One time I came out to a song in Washington by Toby Keith, and this was at the end of my career when I was terrible. And the song was not as good as you want. Where? <laughs> Isn't that a slow song, though? <laughs> yeah, but it, it was hit. It was perfect. I stunk, and and you were sending a message. You yep. were making sure everybody knew. That's right. No balls. One strike. Kiermaier at first. No balls. Two strikes to Brandon Geyer, who is so far today one for three. Tried to bunt his way on his last time up, popped out, singled his second time to the plate. That was in the third, and then was picked off second. That one's hit well out toward left center field. Ashy on the run into the alley. He's going to have a beat on it and makes the catch. Back to first goes Kiermeyer, and there are two outs now in the top of the eighth inning. And Steven Souza Jr. will be the batter. I'm thinking with that ball that was just hit, get a little help with the wind. I would agree with now, that. I don't know if it would have been a home run or not, but I think it would have carried it a little farther, and uh, Cody might have had a harder time catching that ball. I think Kiermaier agrees with you because he was all, all the way out towards second base when that catch was made. Stephen Souza Jr. is two for four. Three other games have already gone final in the National League. If you wondered about those ball games, you can always go to MLB.com to check out the highlights, the box score, all the statistics surrounding those games. Those are all in the National League. American League, uh, there are no day games, at least uh, prior to 4 o'clock. Interleague game going series going on between Pittsburgh and Kansas City. St. Louis and Chicago, the White Sox, that is. Cleveland and Milwaukee. One ball, one strike. Texas and Colorado also. That's a, that one's going on right now, but the games between the American League, American League against the American League are not gotten underway yet. Rudder goes, pitches high, throw to second base is in time. Oh no, not in time. Excuse me. The way the second base umpire pointed, thought there was a chance. I believe he was pointing to say that his foot was staying on the base. Tenth stolen base for Kiermaier. 
Now they're thinking about reviewing this. At least the players are. See that right here. If he keeps the tag on, oh, he got back on. Cesar Hernandez is pointing to the foot, saying it. There was a little crevice of daylight. They're moving Ashy and Blanco right now. Boa's uh, moving Blanco. Juan is moving Ashy. Fastball and it's three and one. Yeah, Blanco just gave the. If, it's, if he's still third, I'm not moving. I'm going to give it to him. Now that way, if he tries to steal third base and Blanco tries to cover, now all of a sudden there'll have to be a ground ball down the third base side to get it. See if Giles throws a slider here. He's talking about Rivera on a 3 2 slider. It's a pitch that he seems like he has the most confidence with right now. Three balls, two strikes. Fastball up high, ball four. So, second walk issued by Giles in the inning. It's time for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use hashtag Philly Photo Data Strong Fan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T Mobile. Longoria has a hit. It was an RBI double back in the fifth. Just a bit high with some of these fastballs. See the splits for Giles. That's uh, kind of out of the character of Ken Giles. Power on power right there. Slider one and two. That one dropped in. May have fooled Longoria. Two pitch off the end of the bat out towards second. Hernandez has got it. Side is retired. Well, he did walk two, but was able to get out of the inning. Side uh, side retired with no runs, no hits, and two men left.
right around the corner. It'll begin on Friday, July 31st, when Pat Burrow will be inducted into the Phillies Wall of Fame. Of course, Schmitty will be here. He'll be here in the booth and also down on the field. Saturday is alumni night. Matt will be down on the field with his jersey, waving to the crowd. He'll be number 12, if you're wondering. Sunday the second is the Wall of Fame Fathead, free to all fans. Tickets can be purchased by going to Phillies.com. Kiermaier does stay in to play center field. Geyer moves from center field to right field. Now the new pitcher is Kevin Jepson. So they've used everybody except for Kurt Casale. Their backup catcher, one of their backup catchers. Jepson's first pitch is outside to Ruiz. He pitched in yesterday's game. He's got some gas. Fastball is up in the upper 90s. And it's one and one. Carlos is 0 for 2. He sacrificed his last at bat. And that led to the tying run scoring for the Phillies. Then they took the lead in the inning before giving it back. At the top of the seventh. That's easy cheese as well. Yeah. Nice and easy delivery. And the ball comes out of his hand. Very firm. But he does throw 96 to 99. But it's not a heavy ball. It's nice and easy. He sits one off the railing in the Hall of Fame club. So two balls, two strikes. It'll be Carlos, then Cody Ashey. And then the pitcher spot. Carlos out toward right center field and Geyer is there. And one away. He hit that ball well, but it sliced back toward the right fielder. Time for the Major League Notebook, Murph. All right, thanks, Tom. Brought to you by St. Joseph's University and some crazy stuff going on in Kansas City. We told you last night that their opening day starter, Jordano, uh, Jordano Ventura, was being sent to AAA, which he was, and Jason Vargas was being reinstated on the Major League roster. Well, Vargas pitched last night after being reinstated, went one and one third innings, and tore a ligament in his elbow. He is done for the season, being sent back to the disabled list, his third stint this year, and being recalled because of that injury is Ventura. So he spent exactly one day down at AAA, and he's coming back. He struggled all season long. They wanted to try and get him right, but they need the uh, the arm back on the major league roster. So Ventura coming back up. And Yunel Escobar left to gaze uh, Nationals-Mets games as that one drops in for a hit for Cody Ashey. He left the Nationals Mets game today after taking a check swing. He dropped the bat and he immediately dropped to the field in pain. It was uh, kind of uh, writhing around in pain. Was able to get back up, get in the batter's box, take one more swing, and said he was done. Walked back into the clubhouse. No word yet on the extent of that injury. Just but another injury for the Washington Nationals. Uh, they did beat the Mets today, but uh, those injuries for those guys are piling up. Yeah, and the uh, the Vargas thing. He came back. Mur Murph said last night from a flexor tendon issue and goes goes on to tear a tendon. I mean that's a shame. Yeah. Didn't big Joe Blanton come in last night? Big Joe came in and pitched very well. Threw 55 pitches last night. Pitched very well. He's in great shape. Michael Franco pinch hitting takes outside. It's one and zero. Big Joe's but a big asset for the Kansas City Royals. He had an opt out at one point. Earlier this year, he chose not to take it and stay with Kansas City. Want to know to Franco pinch hitting? Hasn't played the last day or so because of a sore elbow. You see the blue wrap on that elbow. Uh, 
as always a firm believer that those blue wraps, white wraps, whatever, don't really help. They just remind you that you're sore. <laughs> There's no warmth that's being generated through there. That may be. Maybe got some uh, WD-40 on there or something <laughs> under there. And Revere on deck. Three and zero. Oh. Ball four. Two runners on. One out. And Ben Revere is coming to the plate. He's been on base four times today. Jim Hickey trots out to talk to Jepson. They've used their lefties, Zedano and McGee. There's Papelbon. He's coming in either way in the top of the ninth inning. Nice for having have him come in with a one run lead. Or maybe even a four run lead. Ashi, as we've talked about. And Franco, they have to be aware of the arms in the outfield. De Jesus, it's about it's average. His arm in left field, well above average in center with Kiermaier, and Geyer's, I guess a hair above average in in right field. As the runners lead off, not being held on, pitches outside. One ball, no strikes. Fastball at 96. Jesus. At one point, he did have an excellent arm. He does have an excellent arm. He has 10 outfield assists this year. Big, I mean, excuse me, uh, Kevin Kiermeyer and Geyer, who started the day in center. Here comes the 2 0 pitch to Revere, and he's taken all the way. It's 2 and 1. Is he take it again here? I believe so. I mean, Je uh, Jepson, he worked yesterday through. He didn't throw a lot yesterday. 13 pitches, but he's having a hard time today. Find the strike zone with 11 balls and five strikes. That one slapped through the hole on the left side of base hit. Ashley's going to third. He's going to be held there. Ball just wasn't hit deep enough to score him. The bases are now loaded. Ben Revere has three hits this afternoon. It's another three hit game for him. His average is up over 300. And Freddie Galvez will get a chance to give the Phils the lead with one out and the bases loaded. Told you he was swinging. No, I, I was with you though. <laughs> I thought he was going to take another pitch because Jepson had been all over the place. It's not a bad thing, obviously, when you swing 3 1. That was Boxberger warming up the closer for the Rays. They'll set up a double play depth. Ashley takes his lead off third, Franco off second, Revere off first. One ball, no strikes to Gallus. Very surprising with one out in the eighth inning that they're playing back for double play. Freddie's got pretty good speed. Yeah, from the left side too. Mm -hmm. Really helped him out right there. He's got to be more disciplined. It's one ball, one strike. A fastball out of the strike zone. Larry Bowie just now that was over his head. 
you know, the last two of them, that's the fourth inning and the sixth inning. Freddie getting that uh, the swinging mode. Everything was coming in, he was swinging at. Chopper to first, that's a fair ball. Loney steps on the bag, comes home, and Ashley's safe at home. He got under the tag of Rivera. The home plate up by Chris Conroy just pointed to the corner of the bag. The Phillies take the lead. It's 5 4 here in the bottom of the eighth. I have to believe that the umpire made the right call. You called it from yeah. here. He was safe. Well, it's our GMC precision play of the game. Boy, Loney does a heck of a job Very here, too. Very nice. Tags first base, so now it's a force play at home. And you can see Cody actually getting a very nice jump. I'm sorry, tag play at home. And right there, you can see the foot looks like he got into the plate yep. before the tag. They took a chance. It almost worked. The bounce came high, and Ashy looks right like there. his foot's there before the tag. And Chris Conroy was right on it. See, right there. Foot's on the plate, and then the tag. There's no reason not to ask them to review this here. There's no violation of 7.13. It's just whether he tagged him or not. I think the fact that Rivera was behind the plate toward the Phillies dugout, Matt, enabled Ashley to score. Yeah. So right now the Phillies have taken the lead 5-4. Honestly, I don't think there's any replays that'll show anything strong enough to where they can overturn this call. I would agree with that. Right now you'll give an RBI to Galvis. Well, in New York they'll have our replays. They'll have every replay at their disposal, yeah. including the ones we've shown you, the ones the Rays have. One more look. Watch the tag. The throw was bounced a little high. His knees in the back of the plate, so he didn't block it. And his foot's on there, and then he tags the back foot. But the front foot had already hit the plate. The only thing that could have been done different right there was Loney not touch first base. Now all of a sudden it becomes a force play at force home. play at home. Whether well, it would be no question because he was touching home plate. So instinctive though. I, I don't know. You're right. You're absolutely right. So instinctive though. The, the play basically took him right to the bag. Take a look again. You can watch the impact of his front foot as it comes in. He's there on the plate. Boom. And then the tag. The only thing that might be questioning is if the tag actually got Cody Ashley's calf before tag in the front of the back foot. Boy, I, I, if they see that, then they got an angle. Then that they got a, they got a microscope up there in New York where they're blowing it up to the point that. I think they I think he's made the right call. Chris Conroy's to your left. Ted Barrett, crew chief, to your right. They are taking a long look at this, but I think they have to because they're looking at every little morsel. Here's a closer look. This is where we've blown this up. Boy, it's so amazing technology, isn't it? Right? The tag is not on him, and right there, the foot's on the plate, and then the tag on the calf. At least I think, if I'm seeing it properly. Yeah, he didn't get him there. And his foot's already on the plate, then he got him. This one might take a while. I think they got it right. I do too. I don't think there's anything that could overturn it. I think, if anything, it's, de it's fairly definitive. But. I think it's going to, if it's going to say anything, it'll just say uh, call stands. Oh, here we go. The decision. Safe. Oh, my, oh Lord. my goodness. Wow. Holy cow. Wow. I did not see that coming. Pete McCannon, I think, has every right to question this. You can't argue it. Now he's talking about 7.13. Wow. 242. Holy cow. 
I don't know. 4-4 game, we go to the ninth inning. Series finale only on Cure Auto Insurance presents Phillies Post Game Live. Jonathan Papelbon will take over. Papelbon, 36 game. He's coming in to try to keep this at a 4 4 ball game. Here in the top of the ninth inning. Well, Logan Forsyth will lead things off. Forsyth is two for four. He has a solo home run and an RBI double today. Pep's first pitch is outside. It's 1 0. Well, we give every angle we have. Maybe they had something else that we didn't have that the Rays had. Um, one ball and no strikes. And that one misses 2 0. Boy, I, I don't know. I, everything that we showed really looked like. Really looked like his foot had gotten in there. Two and oh. And it's high. Three balls and no strikes. Well, as soon as we get the information from Major League Baseball, we'll try to let you know. Side ball four, so Forsyth walks on four pitches. Uh, David De Jesus is coming up for the third time. He's walked, he's grounded out to shortstop. Phillies jumped out to a 2 0 lead. The Rays took a 3 2 lead in the top of the fifth. And then in the bottom of the sixth inning, the Phillies retook the lead with two of their own. And then the Rays tied it up on fourth side's opposite field home run. That was in the seventh. This is the spot in the order where Joey Butler started for Tampa. And a broken bat looper into center field, a base hit. And rounding second, heading to third base is fourth side. So the Rays will have runners on first and third with nobody out here in the ninth inning. And James Loney will be the batter.
And Loney, who did not start this game, singled home a run in the fifth inning, struck out in the seventh. See his numbers against Papelbon. Momentum shift again. Yeah, because everything's gotten kind of quiet. Yep. You know. There's a strike. It's 0 and 1. One pitch down the left field line. It'll be slicing foul. So no balls and two strikes to Loney. Phillies have the infield in. They're going to try to cut the run off at the plate. Out towards second. Oh, they've got the runner held at third. The throw goes to first base, so they get the force at first. Forsyth is dancing a little bit. They still have to Jesus in a rundown. They tag him out, and the runner's still at third base. The double play is recorded. <laughs> Phillies infielders kept on moving and peaking at the same time. They were ready to give in and throw to get Forsyth at home, but he never went. Boy, did that work out? Four, three, six, three, double play. Well, pretty much everyone was involved. Nice job here. Make sure Forsyth doesn't go home. But get in the other first base, and you can keep on watch. Everyone keeps on peeking. And not really give them an opportunity to go home. And the only thing you could have done is when Ryan was running the, the runner back towards second base, he would have to do a complete 360 to turn to throw home. Very true. So maybe. Plus, you got to give yourself a little leeway to get off of third base. Well, runner third, two outs. They bunt, and he misses. Elmore does. It's 0 1. By the way, I left off a number. 4 3 6 3 4. 4 3 6 3 4. So, two outs, runner third. Game still tied at 4. 4 3 6 8 9 2, you said? <laughs> I was not giving Murph's phone number out. No, four three six three four. And now the 0 one pitch coming. Chopper softly hit. Blanco comes charging in. He's got to hurry. Bare hands and throws in time. What a play! Andres Blanco saving the top of the ninth inning for Jonathan Papelbon and the Phils. Well, maybe momentum is shifting back. Thanks to the defense. Look at this, folks. This is one of the plays of the of the year for the Phils. The veteran Andres Blanco is able to record the final out here in the ninth inning. So we'll go to the bottom of the ninth.
And Brad Boxberger, you don't often see this, the closer for the other team coming in in the bottom of an inning. The bottom of the inning in a tie game. But he's in. In the bottom of the ninth inning in a 4-4 ball game. Four and five at ERA of 3.78. Well, bottom of the eighth and top of the ninth were very interesting innings. Very interesting innings. Teams had opportunities that just couldn't push right across the plate. Here is Cesar Hernandez. See if the last two half innings were that interesting. As Papelbon ready, prepares himself to hit. What does the bottom of the ninth have in store for us? Well, he's got a first pitch swing by Hernandez. And Kiermeyer will record the first out. So one away. And Ryan Howard's coming up. Well, we want to thank all the fans for participating in today's Ask the Announcers in our Facebook.com slash CSN Philly. Please uh, log on to Phillies.com after the game for exclusive content, videos, and photos, and so much more. We've been talking about it all day long, how important it is. If you're a baseball fan, you can get all the highlights, the archive games, everything. MLB.com, Phillies.com. But we've answered some more of the questions that you presented with us, presented to us on Facebook today. And we do appreciate it. 0 and 1 to Howard. Howard pulls it right at Loney, who was hugging the line. And there are two outs. And Blanco is coming up. Andres Blanco is one for four today in an RBI, his first at bat. He waves at the pitch, it's 0 1. Major League Baseball has uh, sent out their email talking about that play that was reviewed, and they did say that replay official definitively determined the runner's foot was tagged. And we'll reiterate that that is shocking. <laughs> Shocking. Oh, and two. Low. One ball, two strikes. Well, this has been a pretty quick first two outs for Boxberger, so unless he comes up, because he's due up fourth in the top of the tenth if we get there, he could pitch another half inning. Chopper over to first. Loney will back up on it. They wait for Boxberger to get there. And the side is retired. Phillies go down one, two, three here in the bottom of the ninth inning. So we are going to extra innings here in Philadelphia. Out to the tenth in a 4 4 game.
Applebot is going to stay in the ball game. So he will face the Rays for a second inning. So extra inning records the Tampa Bay Rays are two at six the Phillies three and five. So Papp will face Rene Rivera. Rays have one guy left. Now that's Kurt Casale to hit. Although they do have uh, Nathan Carnes, who had a home run last night, the pitcher. For his first major league hit. First pitch is up high, one ball, no strikes. Play and it's one and one. Oh, nice play. Got a good catch. Oh, yeah. Yep. Walking in front of the press box. <laughs> Chopper over to shortstop. Galvis charges. Ball takes a big hop. Freddie's arm must be sore. One away. And Kevin Kiermeyer, who walked his first time up, will be the batter. Meyer takes low, and it's one to zero. It was Ken Giles who walked Kiermaier back in the eighth inning. Nice. Ball one strike. Nice split finger right there. Yep. Back to back pitches. Again for Galvis to his left this time. A little bit more on the throw and here two outs. So two quick outs for Papelbon. 16 pitches so far. And here's Geyer. Geyer today is one for four. And he fouls it back over the screen, and it's no balls in one strike. Well, it'd be nice for Pap to get through this inning with only 19 pitches. That would be one more from now.
Got him. Tried to hold up, but he went around. A 1 2 3 10th inning for Papelbon. He throws 20 pitches and gives the Phils two scoreless out of the pen. Bottom of the 10th inning, Dominic Brown to lead it off when we come back. Four. Well, these have been three close games. The first one was probably considered a blowout compared to the last two. One nothing last night. Four four here today. And Dominic Brown will lead it off against Brad Boxberger. Dominic has two hits today. He's two for four. 23 hits combined, eight runs between the two teams. Out in front of an off speed pitch, it's 0 and 1. Well, this guy's been a good closer for the Rays this year, even if uh, he does not have a household name. Obviously, here he's not in a safe situation. Dominic tried to hold up, no swings. This is Ted Barrett? Ball one strike. No oh, good swing. He just missed it. Foul tipped it. One and two. Phillies try to win their fifth game on this homestand. They're four and one. They swept out the Marlins, split the first two with the Rays. I'd love to see a hanging changeup right here and a ball go off that Powerade sign. <laughs> Second deck. <laughs> Boy, that's getting greedy all the oh, way up that's, there. That's reality. 92 on that fastball. And it remains two and two. For a lot of these players, the Phillies and the Rays, they don't know too much about the, the pitchers that they're seeing in this series. That one is floated out toward left center. DeJesus a long run. Third hit of the day for Dominic Brown. Well, it didn't go second deck power rate, but it's a start. Still the winning run, and he's aboard as Ruiz is coming up. 0 for 3. Carlos sacrificed back in the sixth inning. 
figure he's up there to try to sacrifice again. Takes low one ball no strikes. it in the air and it drops and Boxberger oh, had to wow. play in second. What a break for the Phillies because it wasn't a great butt and Dominic Brown had to hold up. But Boxberger didn't realize that he got the out at first. So the winning run is now in scoring position. Watch Dominic Brown where he is once the ball's right there. Dominic Brown's got 55 feet. <laughs> All right, so now Cody Ashey, who has been uh, a topic of conversation over the last couple of innings. Let's see if he can pick up his third hit. He has an RBI double today and a single. They play him to pull. Holds off. Did, did he go? No. This is Ted Barrett, 1 0. Check swing back to the box. And there are two outs. Odubel Herrera is going to pinch hit for Jonathan Papelbon. Phillies still have Jeff Frank, Core, and Cameron Rupp. Hector Neris is warming up in the pen. Two scoreless innings. Odubel on the year 272. 20 doubles this year. Inside 1 0. Numbers with runners in scoring position for Odubel. Oh boy, he got a good rip at that. It's one ball and one strike. Phillies are four for 13 with runners in scoring position. The Rays, three for 14. Good swing. Solid contact on that mask. Rene Rivera, who is over from the Padres organization, is going to get a visit from the athletic trainer. And from Kevin Cash. He said he was okay. Did he say okay or did he say Tabian? <laughs> Since it is Spanish today. He could have said Tabian. <laughs> I don't think he was going to be out of this game no matter what. have one game winning hit. It was his first hit. It was a double down the right field line earlier this season. Or I should say walk off hit. Let's see if he can bring Dominic Brown home. Dominic takes his lead off second base. He single to start the inning was fortunately sacrificed up to second base.
One ball, two strikes. Fights it away, and it remains one and two. <laughs> nice catch by a young man who Matt brought a glove. Brought a glove to the game. have Alex Colome and Steve Gelt still available in their bullpen. The Phillies have Naris who's warming up. Araujo, Garcia and Gomez. Both backup catchers are available and the Phillies have Jeff Francoeur. Two balls two strikes. Rivera's going to go back out to the mound and talk to Boxberger. Well, they've thrown a couple fastballs, Matt. A couple fastballs up in the zone. They've thrown, when they're throwing the changeups right now, and I know he's not doing it on purpose, he's throwing it inside, so Herrera recognizes that it's a ball automatically. If it's a changeup, down the zone over the middle of the plate. Those are the ones that are hard to lay off, mm -hmm. especially with two strikes. Dominic's got to get a good secondary lead off second base. He's got two outs, so he's going with the crack of the bat. The outfielders shorten up a little bit. Well, and the advantage of having Brown at second base. That he knows it's going to be a striker ball, so he can be more aggressive with the ball in the zone. Steve McCannon, Kevin Cash. And the finale of this three game series in the balance. Bottom of the tenth inning, winning run is at second base for the Phillies. The count two balls and two strikes to Odubel Herrera. Down the left field line, that'll be out of play. Boy, they are just pumping fastballs now. And those fastballs are right at the top of the zone yeah. there. You go either way for a strike or a ball. Time they come back with an off speed pitch. Odubel is spoiling one after another here in this AB. Can he spoil one into the outfield? Another conversation. That's the at least the, yeah, at least the third. Two and two. Sign right there. Another one foul. Another one soft. That was his curveball. It was up a little bit.
Ten pitches, seven fouled off. Let's see if Odubel can win this battle off the bench, trying to win it for the Phillies here in the bottom of the tenth inning. We'll make it the best home stand so far of the year. Two balls, two strikes. Rudder at second in the pitch. And a liner out toward left center field. That's going to drop for a hit. The Phillies win it here in the bottom of the tenth inning. Odubel Herrera, his second walk-off victory of the year. They win it five to four in the bottom of the tenth inning. Look out. El Torito comes through in the bottom of the tenth inning. It's a 5-4 final, and the Phillies take two of three from the Rays. It's a five-in-one homestand for the Phillies. That was an 11-pitch at-bat. Roy well, fell off a lot of tough pitches. A lot of changes, a lot of fastballs up in the zone. Got one that he could handle. Tom, right here you see the fastball up in the zone, gets on top of it, tails just enough away from the center fielder to drop in for the game winner and score D. Brown from second base. Boy, it took forever, didn't it? And I don't think I've ever seen a couple bun run that quick. <laughs> nice swing, nice easy swing. Good feeling right there knowing that uh, it's a game winner. And also knowing that's the... Uh, W. Mason delivery of the game. Odubel Herrera comes off the bench. He's the hero in the 10th inning, and then he's got to avoid Jonathan Papelbon, who <laughs> takes him down because Pap gets the win. And with that, Odubel's down on the field with Juan Samuel as his interpreter and Greg Murphy. Murph? All right, thank you very much, guys. Well, uh, yeah, a good walk-off win for the Phils. 11 pitch at bat. Uh, ask him, take us through the approach of that bat, the bat coming off the bench like that. Did Dice que fue un turno de 11 eh, eh, picheos, que, que qué estaba pensando, ¿no? Eh, eh, mientras más lanzamiento veía, que, que cómo te estaba sintiendo. No, sí, yo me estaba sintiendo bien, gracias a Dios, con la cantidad de picheos que vi, me iba sintiendo mejor, mejor. Cada picheo que pasaba, me iba sintiendo mejor en el turno y solamente cuando tiene 12 try, mi mentalidad fue poner la bola en juego para pa ver qué pasaba y gracias a Dios que pasó algo positivo. He said he was feeling better and better each each pitch that he saw keep falling off some some tough pitches and uh, he was just trying to put the ball and play there, make sure he made solid contact. But the more pitches he was seeing, the better and more comfortable he was feeling at the plate. How comfortable was he when Jonathan Papelbaum was charging out to tackle him out there? Dice que cómo te sentiste cuando papá vamos a salir a atacar. Oye, me asustó. Dice que me scare him a lot. Uh, five out of six on this home stand. Uh, this team's playing some good baseball right now. Dice que ganamos cinco de seis. Que, que cómo tú te sientes que se siente que el equipo está jugando mejor béisbol en estos momentos. Oye, sí, este, el equipo ahorita tiene muy buena, buena, buen compañerismo ahí adentro, tanto en el clubhouse como aquí en el juego, y eso es lo que nos está ayudando a Hacer lo mejor en esta segunda mitad. He said he feel like he know that there's a little bit of chemistry going on in, in the clubhouse and I here, and I think it translates into victories this home stand. All right, thank you very much, guys. Congratulations. Big win for these guys. We'll send it back upstairs. All right, Burp, we appreciate that. Thanks to Odubel Herrera and Juan Samuel. Well, it took 10 innings, but the Phillies did pull out the victory. Man, did that ball hang up there for a long time. I didn't know if Kiermaier was going to be able to track it down or not. Well, instead, the tracking down was of Abdubal Herrera by Jonathan Papelbon <laughs> as he tore him to the ground. The Phillies win it 5-4. We'll be back to Philadelphia to wrap things up.